I may hate drama in my life, but I love talking about the drama in yours. I may watch too much reality TV, but you're listening to me talk about it. Hi, bitches, we're back! Yes, yes, yes. This is Fumi. This is B. And then you have tuned into a new episode of Reality TV. Yes. And bitch, I'm a cow. <laughs> Moo. <Yeah. laughs> I know it's relatively late by the time we recorded this episode after this whole Moo song, <laughs> but for some reason, it's really been stuck in my head. <laughs> and it's so catchy. Yeah. It was freakishly catchy. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it wasn't like a serious song, just like, I'm about to make a song about cows. Yeah. Apparently, she's re-releasing it in... Doja Cat? Yeah, and mm-hmm. releasing it to all the streaming platforms. So, I think she I mean, she it. might as well. I think yeah. it has over 8 million views on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, you might as well say, oh, well, at least let me make it a little bit more official but trying to make some money yeah. off of it or something. Because mm-hmm. it was just a legit, just whatever. Yep. And then, of course, that made me want to listen to her other stuff. And I was like, you know, I actually kind of like her stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. And she said she made the song in the video in one day. I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't yeah. doubt it either. <laughs> yeah. She probably already had the outfit in the studio. Like, God damn it. <laughs> right. Like, uh, this works. Yeah. Apparently, the shirt did inspire the song. Yeah. She could really do much with it because the sleeves are in the way. But. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to figure out how she came about. Yeah. Of course, my favorite line is, got milk ho. <laughs> <laughs> got beef. Right. <laughs> got steak ho. <laughs> got cheese. That's my favorite. It's like, right. what the fuck? Just has it all. Wait, what's that song? Tell your boyfriend I'm not scared of him because I'm a... Oh, what's a boyfriend? If your boyfriend's got beef, beef. Oh, I'm a vegetarian, so and I, I ain't fucking scared of him. <laughs> fucking up. Um, 308. <laughs> yeah, I like them. They're I do, hits. too. That, Panic at the Disco, I really mm-hmm. love. Franz Ferdinand, I love. 2007. We're like black people really who good. live outside the yeah. box. <laughs> Gym class heroes. I was Fall so excited when Evanescence came back out. Yeah. 2007, 2008 was a good year. It really was for music, for overall yeah. genres of music. It was really good. It was. So, yeah. But anyway, we have a lot to fucking cover. Yes, we do. Um, I feel like we went on a break possibly at the most horrible time because <laughs> so much so much is going on. Yeah. The feud between Safari and Nikki on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently the eggplant, eggplant leak of Safari's penis yeah, got him a multi-million dollar sex toy deal. Yeah. And so all the while, Nikki has been talking shit about his love and hip hop checks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's <laughs> he was in the process one. of a much more bigger check. <laughs> mm-hmm. So at you least use he, what you got to, to get, get what, what you, you want. want. <laughs> and he didn't right. even try. Right. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. You know, these leaks happen on their own sometimes. <laughs> Case in point, Mimi. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> at least she didn't he didn't lie or yeah, made this she whole... went through a lot for all that to come out. Yeah, but it was more theatrics because she mm-hmm. had to lie and cry and, oh my God, you leaked it. What the fuck happened? Oh my God, my daughter. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we did it. I needed the money. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. All right, Shaw Rod. Mm-hmm. But at least he didn't have like a tape. Yeah. And then on top of that, Men getting mm. away with that is much more acceptable, sadly, in our culture anyway. So. Yes. And because he had a nice sized one, it was like, well, we accept it. 
You know, it was like it was like five inches. Like if you don't go somewhere with this small, <laughs> right? You aren't laughed off the face of social media because of your small schwanz. Right, and everybody was like, Nikki, why you break <laughs> up with him? Right. <laughs> Maybe she held held on longer because of it. Pro- I'm pretty sure at the end of the day. Because 10 years and y'all don't have still kids a or a married. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a long time. Yeah. So. And he was basically living off of you. So. According to her. Yeah. Remember that one time? Though? So would you say that there's a difference between Farah having a sex toy line and Safari having a sex toy line? Well, the difference... Besides and it's not the even gender. Of the, okay. Yeah, all it's right. not even gender. It was for her because she spent all this time making it out to be that this was the worst thing True. that ever happened to me. This was the worst thing that I ever did. And then all of a sudden, you know what? Let me just have some sex toys that's a replica of my private parts. Like, yeah, it was complete bullshit. Yeah. So that's really what it was. You know, as far as it was just like, well, it's out there. How can I capitalize on it? Oh, <laughs> multi-million dollar deal? All right, I'll take it. Yeah. Then, I mean, go So, on. right. So, had, like, I mean, I still would have been like, what the hell? But had from the beginning, she'd be like, you know what? It's a tape. It's out. It's what I did. And I'm going to c- further capitalize off of it. It would have been like, all right, well, then just that that's I your life. I think she did the whole woe is me purely for sympathy. Yeah. Especially when she was on... Um, couple therapy with jo- Dr. Jen. Mm-hmm. You know, her and Dr. Jen was off camera. Right. And they got back on camera. It's like the most horrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. I wasn't even that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's for like, dramatic sake, because it, it makes people, what the hell was I, said? Like, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see the actual tape itself, but I saw like clips, you know, PG clips of yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, she looked pretty darn happy with that camera in her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing that ever happened. Hmm. Hello. Like, okay. Get my right side. Right. That's it was so side. horrible. He did anal and there was no lube. Like, okay. Ew. Like, Ooh. that's probably her version of why it was so horrible. I like, it. I agreed to it, but I just thought there'd be lube. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Where is the lube? Yeah, like all right. And so now she probably has her own line of lube. <laughs> like it's just, it, I feel again. like if something has been incredibly horrifying, you're not going to capitalize on it. Yeah, like that's it. The, the most you would do is be spread awareness and prevention and stuff right. like that. But to say, "Whoa, it's me," and then you say cash me out <laughs> right you know for my woe is me i think yeah. that's not you're exploiting yourself yeah like you didn't even be like you know well let me maximize and make money off of this tape it was like let me take it two steps further and like, i'm talking about her friends being porn stars right the bitches that be defending her on instagram you go right. on their that's page like, and it's like that's Bitch. like him showing up to freaking porn hub conventions and yes Exactly. And a exactly. sex toy line. like okay. Hers is a little bit different because she's never really got into the sex industry. industry. Even though that, remember that one, back when I did watch Keep It Up with the Kardashians, she did that calendar oh, yeah. photo shoot or something Perezzi. like that. And she thought it would be private and then it wind up being. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> She ain't. I love that You know family. what? That's the best out of the whole clan. I remember Chris. that. She was going through like the office or something and saw these pictures of Kim and was like, wait a minute. Well, she must have forgot to send them off. So let me go do it. And she was like, that was a private calendar for Reggie. Like, okay. That, she like, earns her 10%. It's just all over the place. Yeah. But then she did that again later when she was married. I know. Her, yeah. And then we were like, bitch, weren't you just ugly crying a couple years yeah. ago about this and now you're doing yeah. it willingly? And that's, that's I guess, the only thing in comparison is like you cried about it before, not with the sex tape per se, yeah. but after that. Right. Like they, they told me the pictures were going to look like this and they really look like this and now it looks like I'm trying to like... Just be naked all the time and yeah. Say but that I guess to now paper she's magazine. like, I embrace my body and I love. Okay, whatever. It's like pick a side. Right. 
either you embrace it or you don't. Right. I think now it's just like, whatever. Yes. Yeah. And then she got into it with Tyson Beckford. They had a little spat back and forth. Yeah. And I'm just trying to remember all this stuff because my phone's dead. So. <laughs> um, Lyrica Anderson from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood is pregnant. Congrats. We don't know who the father is. I mean. A one or Safari. <laughs> right. Show wise, we don't know who the father is. <laughs> but <Mona>. congrats. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um what else? I mean, it's so much to just going on. I can't remember um, all of it. Yeah. Um, but let's just dive into the shows. Yes. So we want to start off with our reunions because mm-hmm. all those close always, those yeah, close the chapters. They always pretty much bring the whole reunion to a close, mm-hmm. and then really you can just catch up on the whole season at the goddamn you reunion. You really can. So if you don't watch the whole season, you can be like, okay, I'll just tune into the reunion when it comes on. Mm-hmm. Um, with ha- Real Housewives of Potomac. Hopefully they'll use time to go get some business. Mind it. Mind you, they're already filming for next season. Oh, they did. They filmed, started filming before the reunion. Uh, Last reunion aired. Is that good? How far did they? I guess they wanted to do it because Candace had her wedding. Oh. So I guess they wanted to go ahead and like rush the reunion. Yeah. Um, I mean the the new season. Yeah. Because lo and behold, that was only season three. It yeah. seems like it's been, but you know what? It did take a long time for season three to come back. So yeah. that does make sense. Cause I feel like it's been almost a year. The first season was like a good four or five years ago. It was a yeah. while ago. Um, I watched it since season one mm-hmm. and I was like, this is actually more interesting than I thought. I thought it was going to be another like DC. Yeah. Cause the first of all, I was like, where the fuck is Potomac? Because right. <laughs> I had no clue. Yeah. And then it was just like, this is just going to be born like DC. DC only lasted two seasons. And the mm-hmm. only reason why it lasted for two seasons, because old girl and her husband, remember they crashed, crashed the White out. House yeah. uh, dinner gala? And I was like, oh, well, that's only going to be interesting because we can right. see it then. Miami was kind of, it was Good and trash at the same yeah, time. It was. Like I felt like it lasted a little bit longer than it needed to. Yeah. But the fight with Johanna and uh what's her face was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if you had to pick a housewife that you a housewife that you were behind and agreed with out of all of the Potomac housewives, who would it have been? Um all of them, I would. You know, honestly, I would say Karen this season, just because for the most part, she was like, look, I'm not in your business. Mm-hmm. So stay the fuck out of mine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know if she was lying to them, but even if she was, I probably would have been lying to them too, because you don't deserve to know the truth of what's going on. That's in my exactly life. how about how I feel about that whole situation. Yeah. I would lie to you on purpose (laughs) just because like you don't deserve to know the truth. My thing is that when it comes to, especially let's say pick Giselle because they have a longer relationship between her and Karen than anybody else on this particular season. I think so. Yeah. Um, Minus Sheree. She don't even count. She's not a housewife. Yeah. All right. Friend of cast. Right. Um, Anyway, I feel like Giselle, she, She had the audacity to act as if she really wants to know what's going on with Karen when she does things like make up the t-shirt. Right. It's like at the shade room and stuff about what's going on in her life. Yeah. And then when they're in Paris or France, I don't think they were in Paris. They're in Cannes. There we go. Mm -hmm. And she was like... Well, that's why your husband's husband wants such and such and such. I forgot the lady's yeah, name. I, yeah. Which was the business partner of Giselle. Right. How do you expect me to turn around and confide to in you? confide in you or tell you anything was going on in my life when every two seconds you're talking shit? Mm-hmm. So you're gonna talk shit regardless. Right. So I might as well not even tell you yeah, anything because you're gonna well, talk shit anyway. Say, I'd rather you at this point say 
Roberta is a big fat liar rather than you actually have facts of my life and you're going around spreading it and then adding your own two cents to it and mm-hmm. just, I'd rather, yeah. Yeah. And then if it's like, whoa, Giselle said you're a liar. Well, look at our show. Would you tell her any of your business? No, not at all. So, yeah. No, not at all. And then one of the scenes where it was the worst with Giselle was when Monique was telling everybody we're going to the perfumeria yeah. or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. And she was like, why don't you want to go? And <laughs> she was like, oh, Karen, I thought, you know, this would be great for you. And she was like, okay, cool. Like, that was just her response. Yeah. And Giselle felt like because she didn't have a greater response, she, she didn't jump at the, you know, oh, my God, thank you so right. much. She felt like, why aren't you happier than that? She did this for you. What stage are you at? And it's like, okay, bitch, like, I, this is why I don't yeah. want to tell you anything. Yeah. Because it's not, it's really a frenemy type of thing with right. Giselle. Right. I don't feel like she has any type of true friendship. And out of all the seasons that we watch of all the housewives, the relationship between Robin and Giselle will wind up being to where they're not friends anymore. Oh, I yeah. guarantee you. Oh, yeah. It is going to be where Robin and Giselle aren't friends anymore. Yeah. Because they're both each other's yes men. Well, mm-hmm. more so Robin than yeah. Giselle. I feel like Giselle is more on her own ground. And I feel like that one time Robin feels like Giselle was really wrong or foul. And wants to say something. Yeah, and she'll say something, Giselle won't be having it. Yeah. That's how I feel about the whole situation. Because mm-hmm. Giselle kind of has done that with everybody else. Yeah. She came from Monique when she didn't even know the bitch. Right. Just and she- then she's trying to understand why she don't have a relationship with Monique. You tried to make it seem like she was homeless. Right. And when she told you she had four homes. Now she's bragging. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Giselle is, of course, she keeps the drama going show wise. Yeah. But when it comes to each person's individual storyline, I would get rid of Giselle. Yeah. She doesn't really have anything going else but Sally, but to be a hater on everybody else. Yeah. Like, yeah, Ashley's always in other people's business, but at least she got a storyline where it's like, well, girl, your life ain't nearly together. <laughs> yeah, true. At least she does have some type of yeah side storyline. Even Candace. She's an actual wife, <laughs> if we want to take it back to the roots true. of this show. I mean, Candace is a wife now, too. Right. So. Yeah. Um. At least Robin's still with the man she <laughs> married. Lisa and Juan is maybe working it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. That whole situation is yeah. weird as fuck. And did you see that little rap that Monique did that she wanted to, to recite at the reunion, oh. but they told her that she couldn't? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could play it, but my phone's dead. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was. I mean, let's, let's be honest. She's not a real rapper. Right. No, it wasn't <laughs> even that it was bad. It uh-huh. was the fact of like. I get why she did it, but mm-hmm. then at the same time, she didn't have to do it. Because I feel she like didn't. Monique is, they hate you. I hate to say it like, oh, they're jealousy, but they literally are jealous of you. That's why they have all these problems. She's a catty heron. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> the real case. <laughs> like, they're, they're jealous of you. You're a younger, prettier, married, right. rich version yeah. of what they want to be. <laughs> right. So. So, yeah, she did. If, when you yeah. went on that, that. But, I mean, it was, it was catchy. It had its little shady Of course, moments. my favorite was the end. She right. keeps talking about my finances, girl, bye. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you keep talking about your right. finances. Like, I would just. I don't know. You want like to said. sue me, don't you? You want right. me to you with this umbrella, huh? You know, make your dreams come true. <laughs> What's you something I would say if I was in her position? I mean, right. like, I'm just being real. Mm-hmm. I feel like... Like, if you can't afford rent on that apartment, you know, maybe we could sublease one of our homes for you. You want the, you want the pool house? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I guess if we're taking, like, the high road, it's like, girl... Y- just you existing alone is like Moni is definitely that person where it's really you have you don't have to respond. Yeah, you really, really, really don't because your life 
speaks for yeah, it all. Yeah, it makes them mad all on their own. All of the time. You and having it, your baby makes Ashley mad. You having all your money makes Robin mad. You having a happy marriage and four homes makes Giselle mad. Yeah. It's just... Everybody mad. <laughs> By you just existing. That's what she said. I don't have to bring nobody on the show to get you. I, 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 I wake myself. up and breathe and do that. It's and like, you do. Yeah, that's very true. Because all you did was breathe on your first appearance right. and she was already up your ass. Yeah. Giselle. Like, oh, why are you rapping here? Who does that? Well, Karen asked her to. Like. <laughs> yeah, she's so mean girl. Yeah. Like, really, really bad. But yeah. it's worse when the mean girl is single, broke, or ugly. Yeah. And she's one of those. Yeah. So it's like, mm, you you don't qualify to be Regina George. No, not mm. at all. Mm-mm. If anything... You're not even Gretchen Wieners. Her dad invented toaster strudel. Yep. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> Who would she be? Um, Army pants and flip flops. <laughs> Regina George wore <laughs> army pants and flip flops. So I went out and bought army, army pants, pants and flip flops. <laughs> You're her. Oh You're my not God. even a plastic. Right? <laughs> well, what was the woman that made out with the hot dog? Oh, yeah, oh my God, it's a hot dog. Classic, classic, right. classic movie. Yeah. I never forget when that movie came out. I was like, this movie looks stupid. Yeah. And then when it came out like HBO or whatever, I said, this movie is amazing. Right. Why it- did I watch it anytime sooner? <laughs> it was amazing. Anyway, I never our mean girl reference. Well, we'll probably bring him up later again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel like I'm also on Karen's side because I feel like she's the realest out of all of them, even though she doesn't she doesn't really have to tell her business. Yeah. And that's the one thing about reality. Somebody said, well, you shouldn't be on a reality TV show. She was like, well, I mean, I can still divulge in the amount of information that I, I want, want to. to. I don't have to get every everything. single thing about yeah. my life, which is kind of what you were bringing up with What'd you call it? Shots of Sunset. Oh, yeah. So it was like MJ was really going hard at. Right. Like, I put it all out there. Well, well that's your she fault. Was, yeah. <laughs> and that's what MJ was like. Um, That's fine and all, but awesome. I don't have to. Yes. Asa, yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know why I say MJ. Asa. Correction. Pause. She did a little troll of a picture of her son but mm-hmm. the back of his head yeah he has the most gorgeous curly hair oh, of all time it. and he's like a year and a half now oh dang time goes fast. yeah they were at some show that the jacksons yeah. were performing at and i'm pretty sure anybody who went saw yeah him. but yeah anyway going back to the current show that we're talking about but i mean yeah you kind of can divulge in what you want to and if it's interesting enough to make me a cast member then don't get mad at me. Get mad at producers. True. Yeah. Yeah. True. Like, why am I sitting here? Got to do all this. And she gets to keep this and this secret, but she still is on the show. Well. Maybe you can keep stuff, some to yourself. But that's the thing. Mm-hmm. is like everybody else, their storylines are so limited that they, if they did keep it to themselves, they would have no storyline. Yeah. I mean, Ashley, the only thing really going for her is her husband and her marriage fails. Yeah, and the mom stuff. Right. Yeah. And her being in other people's business. <laughs> constantly, constantly, yeah. constantly being in other people's business. I just, I Why didn't is it so important for you, young lady, to have to hold other people accountable? Who made you the god of accountability? I don't know. Why do you have to spend so much time and energy in other people's shortcomings? I don't yeah. understand that. I'm not going to sit there. Bravo and- producers made her the god of accountability. <laughs> like, <laughs> True. look. This is the real. God they probably it, set Andy. them. They probably sit them in individual meetings and like, so look, we're halfway through with editing. You need to give us something. We need more. So this is what I'm gonna tell you. We need more. We think Karen's lying about this. We think Monique was drunk. We need this. We need you to go and make this happen. <laughs> I, I because, I mean, there really is people out there like that that are like. I need to know your business, mm-hmm. but I, mm, it's, yeah. I, it, in normal, in normal circumstances, that's definitely not something I would do. Yeah. I don't seek. It's, it's like you have enough of your own business to be 
Like, yeah, if somebody call me or come over, like, girl, guess what I heard? Yes, I will gladly listen. But ain't I'm not, no. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you and I do. It's like, <laughs> girl, look, guess what I just saw? Like, I right. just came across it, but I didn't go look Looking for, for it. it. And I'm not about to go and call you out on you lying because this post don't match what you said on Facebook, but you really, no. I will pull a, what is that? I will pull a Mr. Mackey and say, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> I, that's all I'm gonna do. Yeah. I don't need to go any further than that because I got shit that I'm trying to do and accomplish and finish, and that takes a lot of brain space as it as it, it really is. Does. So worrying about other people and trying to hold them accountable. Well, you're a liar. None of my lies really affect you personally. It, it really so don't. So like, what does it matter? Yeah. You just trying to get my Bravo check taken away, aren't yeah. you, bitch? You ain't got no that or get you a bonus. True. One of the two bonus. Um, yeah. I mean, besides that, that was the main thing. I feel like Sharice was trying too hard with the whole mm-hmm. situation with Monique. Mm-hmm. I feel like she owned up to the fact that in the beginning she kind of was bring, trying to bring Kendall on the show. And I feel like Giselle still wanted to be mad at Monique oh, yeah. for some reason. Like, and then Sharice, because she wants to be loved by everybody and stay on the show in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. She's like, you're a liar, liar. It's like, but you just, okay. Right. right. <laughs> All right. That's fine. She, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm a liar. What's that song? Um, so Candace from Florida Mama Shore. I know this whole good goddamn song. Okay. And she said, I'm an asshole, lying monster. That's not a woman. <laughs> so that's that's came in my head. Man. I was a woman yesterday. A woman yesterday. But right. not today. I'm an asshole. <laughs> I was like, this is the weirdest song. Floor Bam Shore. If you guys haven't watched it, I kind of recommend you watching it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just kind of pointless. And then the husbands came out. Well, not everybody was a husband. You yeah. got half the half the couch didn't have nobody. Yeah. Giselle didn't have nobody. Robin didn't have nobody. Oh, he didn't even show up? No, he didn't come. Oh. No. <laughs> He's had better things to do. He was like, oh, well, last year he didn't want to come. This year he actually has the, a game to coach. Right. Right. <laughs> That's what they all say. Did he go for milk and never came back? Right. A game <laughs> to coach. <laughs> Air quotes. Right. <laughs> and then um, the black Bill Gates is there. I love when Karen flipped off Michael. <laughs> Fuck you, weirdo. Fuck your family. Fuck your Australian weirdos. Fuck right. your family. Including Ashley, because she gets on my nerves. Mm-hmm. And then I just can't stand when Ashley's like, well, I like Karen. I love Karen. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you can't stand her. Right. If you love her, then why are you so focused on trying to annihilate her? Right. What the fuck? Why? So, anyway, yeah, pretty much on Karen's side out of all of them. After that, I more have Monique's back. Yeah. And then after that, Candace. Yeah. Some, some sort. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. But she falls in third place. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we can move on from that. And we can go ahead and go to part... we only seen part one of New York mm-hmm. Reunion. I saw all on Instagram, because that's the main social media yeah. platform that I'm on. And everyone felt like Bethany was being ganged up on. on yeah, the I... Reunion. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out why. Yeah. And I only can say that because... Bethany, out of all the housewives, is very consistent on how she is. Yeah. Nothing really changes about her. Yeah. Not how she speaks to anyone, mm-hmm. not how abrupt she is, how blunt she is. She never really changes. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, how all of a sudden you got Ram- Ramona, Carol bitch ass, mm-hmm. and Dorinda drunk ass. 
all yelling and because bickering at her. Because those are the, the three same. that, well, she calls everybody out on their shit, but those are the three this season that she has been like, I'm not taking your shit. I mean, she's never really taken anybody's shit, but it has really just been like consistently with those three. One with the whole Dorinda and the drinking thing, which really like gets under Dorinda's skin. Ramona, j- just because Ram- Ramona. Her over exaggerations always make me laugh. Yeah. She's a perfect fit for all the infomercials in the world. She really is. She's <laughs> like, oh my God, baby. Oh my God. How dare you? And like, you don't support women. You don't support a women. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And I support you all the time. Oh my God, Bethy. I can't believe it. Oh my God. I hang it up. <laughs> it's so funny. Walking her dog. <laughs> oh, I want her. I want her to pass by as extra like, What's going on? Are you mad at the phone? Like, what <laughs> right. did the phone do? Did it die right. on you? Right. Yeah. Ramona, she... It's Ramona. Out of the it's... three of them, Ramona is being Ramona. Yeah. Like, I can't yeah. really fault her too much. Right. But I felt like since she had a bandwagon to jump on, she was right. up more than usual. Yeah. Because she can't go toe-to-toe no. with, with None Bethany. None of them can. She can only do it when there's an audience around. She yeah. can't do it by herself. And so... Yeah. Carol, Carol was being a complete bitch right. this whole season. And I'm so happy that she's not going to be on there next season. Oh, she isn't? No. Oh. No. She said she bowed out like a good month ago before, oh. I think, either right before the reunion aired or right after. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss yeah. Dorinda and blah, blah, blah. I was watching that. Uh, Because I caught up on, like, the last few episodes, Uh like, when they went on their other vacation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, what I honestly think happened between Bethany and Carol's relationship, I think Carol just got tired of being Bethany's friend. Like, Mm -hmm. that's what I really think it was. I think it was, you know what? No. I'm not going to say she got tired of being her friend. I think Mm -hmm. Carol wanted space from Bethany, which is why initially, I guess when the season started, it was like, oh, Carol's been hanging out a lot more with Tinsley and then not hanging out with Bethany. And everybody was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And then I think it grew Carol's frustration, whatever her frustration was, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It went from just being like, you know what? I just need some space from you to Mm -hmm. That whole back and forth rumor of if Bethany called her boyfriend and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I think as the season went on, Carol was just like, I don't really want to be friends with you. And didn't really have a valid reason aside from the point of like, I think I'm just tired of being your friend. And probably had she would have just really came out and said it. Bethany probably would have just been like, well, all right, cool. That's she how it is. She would have dropped it a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I was like, but it was the whole, well, I don't know why you're mad because I'm not mad at you. And then Bethany's like, well, I'm not mad at you. But then y'all friendship still can't yeah. get back to where it was. And I think it was just like, just say you was just tired of the friendship. I feel like it's this. Bethany is a very special type of person. Mm-hmm. To be real good, good friends, like butt buddies with Bethany, yeah. you have to be able to love that person for who they are. They are. Yeah. And you cannot expect anything different from what they can usually give you. Yeah. So I feel like in the beginning, Carol doesn't usually have friends that has the personality like Bethany. Yeah. But she dealt with it. And when she start, she probably didn't get the reciprocation of friendship how she's used to. Yeah. And it, it did eventually wear off on her. Yeah. But she's not as a direct person as Bethany. So yeah. instead of telling her she was like well i'll just avoid you <laughs> yeah and that's the part that i didn't like is because she would tell bethany bethany be like i don't know what the fuck is going on right like we were cool and now we're not yeah like what is going on she's like well i mean 
I don't really have a problem with you. It's like, no, bitch, you do. Yeah. Just tell her that you have a problem. Right. Or just say your problem is you didn't do anything specifically, but I just, hmm. We're just like, we're, we're not, just, we're not compatible. <laughs> like, it's not, this is just I don't for, hate you. We can be friends for a season. Like, it's okay yeah. having that conversation. I've had that myself where I have to tell somebody, like, uh, look. <laughs> This ain't what I thought. Yeah, this is this is not <laughs> what I want to deal with. And I, I can't do that. Yeah. I haven't had to do that often. Yeah. But I've done it more recently in my adult years. Yeah. Maybe it has to happen. Two times. It has to happen. Except because if the person keeps asking and y'all are filming a show together, it's like, okay. Yeah, and then it's like she tells Bethany one thing, but then she runs behind Bethany's back and says all kind of shit. To mm-hmm. everybody else about Bethany. Yeah. And then they go back to Bethany and be like, <laughs> what the fuck? And she's like, what the fuck? Like, and then yeah. she's like, well, I want to have a conversation. She's like, I don't have a problem with you. It's like. Right. I think that's what mainly irritated me about Carol is because she wanted to have this huge dog-like persona behind the scenes if there was a group situation, she would talk. Yeah. But if they're individual, she won't talk. Yeah. And it's irritating. She was like, mm-hmm. Bethany, get off my jock. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, and then Bethany's looking like, what the fuck? Like, right. <laughs> what jock? What do you, what is this jock that you speak yeah. of? I have no idea. And she irritated me. And then when she actually was going through something, because that whole thing that she got with Jason, baby, it is yeah. nasty. Yeah. And the fact that she got granted a restraining order is a huge deal. Yeah. And so the fact she was like crying and like having an anxiety attack. And instead of asking like, is Bethany okay? She's like, oh my gosh, she just wants all the attention about her. It's like, now you're looking like a cold hearted bitch. Right. Yeah nitpicking on whether Bethany showed enough appreciation right. to Dorinda about this fucking nutcracker. Right. Just, right. It was like, I would have appreciated it if had you would have just been like, I'm over her. I'm tired. Mm. <laughs> oh, it. And just, oh, just, it. <laughs> just, just been like, I'm tired of her. Mm. Things I used to be compassionate about, now I'm like, here we go again. Yeah. Like, just, just say it. You, that won't make you the worst person in the world. No. It would kind of make you like, dang, but. Yeah, that's it. That's all. I did just say I had this expectation of reciprocity in our friendship that I never got. And yeah. I think I'm just kind of at my end. And it's okay if you can't give me what I require in a friendship. It's no love loss. It's just that I don't think this is like. A friendship compatibility. Right. We we're demoted to acquaintances. Right. <laughs> and I feel like it would have just ended yeah. it. But you made this whole drawn out season for no good goddamn reason. Yeah. And it's like we're cool, but then we're not cool, but then we are, but then we it was like, I just love Bethany was just looking like, okay, like <laughs> you guys are yelling at me and I'm just I'm not gonna really yell back. Yeah. And when Andy tried to tell her, like, well, you guys are both talking shit about each other, she tried to call Andy out. Mm-hmm. You're full of shit. He was like, no, you guys were, and you guys were. Yeah. But the only person who's really taking accountability for that right. is Bethany, which that's how she is. Yeah. So I don't think Bethany is ever not taking accountability of anything. Yeah. So that's just how she is. Uh, I'm tired of Tinsley looking like a girl going to eighth grade Sadie Hawkins dance. <laughs> she's like that lighthearted friend that's like. She's a New York version of Cameron from Dallas that wears yeah. pink. Yeah, she's just very like. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, bless her heart. It was weird. <laughs> Sonia, I. She's definitely on my. Not necessarily hate to love. Yeah. But it's like, you can't help but love right. her. Right. Like, you can't, you can't be mad at her. Yeah. I'm like, you know, if I'm 50, unmarried, and just got a nice little trust fund from a marriage that didn't work out. 
and I got I all these young ones. I want to be a little bit like Sonya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Just living life, <laughs> right. showing ass and tits. Right. Just, not the whole way, but the, yeah. But not ashamed of being right. a Right. Just certain, happy. And yeah. She's not ashamed. Can't tell her nothing. <laughs> she doesn't take herself too seriously. Like, she doesn't yeah. really beat herself up for anything. Her dress came on loose at the Countess and Friends, <laughs> she and she said, just kept on going. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit more than my dress coming down and me being naked under here to Keep stop my shine. Okay. Stop my shine. <laughs> right. Uh, mm, so, I'd be so, better than that. <laughs> yeah, she's really the only person that truly had Bethany's back this season, yeah. which I really appreciated. And Ramona just... I think Ramona's time has ended, in my opinion, because there really wasn't her. There was no storyline of her own. Yeah, like if you can't hold a storyline of your own anymore, then yeah. it gets to the point where you just—it's like, why are you here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Sonya had her own storyline about trying to get this. You know, she rented out this motherfucking townhouse for thirty-two thousand dollars a fucking month. Sounds a good. month. Mm-hmm. Somebody got it. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. I'm like, that's like, what? Four hundred some thousand dollars a year? So she does nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. She's making over a quarter of a million dollars a year by being a landlord. Because she didn't want to sell her townhouse that she's had for years and yeah. years and years and years. Well, shoot, getting that type of money. <laughs> And then she probably wants to downsize anyway because her daughter's off to right. boarding school. So it's like, I really need... She got rid of all her interns. She mm-hmm. had a million and one interns. She did. And so she doesn't have them anymore. She just has... She went down from like 10 dogs to three. Like, you know, you just downsize. Yeah. Now, in New York standards, downsizing from something that costs thirty seven thousand dollars a month to five thousand dollars a month that's just that's the minimum that she's gonna be spending on anything that she would like it's five thousand that's probably gonna get you no more than two bedrooms yeah she'll probably be at like 10 yeah (laughs) yeah she probably be upward up to closer to ten thousand dollars a month but still it's It's, like you still got twenty two thousand dollar profit right in in that's just crazy. God bless For her. a townhouse that you had. And you're getting your New York checks. Right. Just lovely. Right. I want to... I have a list of the housewives I would love to party with. Right. <laughs> Sonia would be one of them. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, Kelly's on that list. <laughs> She's a cougar running loose in OC. Right. And actually, too, Shannon, too. Shannon can have a good time yeah. when it comes to partying. Mm-hmm. Vicky, no, you had your shot about four or five years ago. Yeah. Woohoo has officially <laughs> left the building. And I would say Stephanie and what's her face from Dallas, mm-hmm. the two friends. Atlanta. That's a rough one. <laughs> I would. I kind of am forced to pick Nene. Yeah. Partying wise, Candy is like a close second. Mm-hmm. But everybody else asks too bougie for my blood. Yeah. I'm talking about a nice, good, wholesome. We about to dance our ass off, tonight right? And have a good time. Ramona was back in her turtle time. Not now. <laughs> not 2018. Ramona. Yeah. No. I'm good. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, back to New York. Yeah, I don't, uh, there wasn't really much any of anything else that was significant yeah. in New York um, reunion. Obviously, there's still a part two left. Yeah. And then I do like the clip. Bethany's like, yeah, booyah, bitch. <laughs> she <laughs> wants to point her phone at Carol. Yeah. Because Carol was just like in really in denial. She Carol acts like she didn't do anything. Uh, and that's the part that irritates me. Like yeah. you were talking a lot of shit. And to tell Andy that he was full of shit because he sat in the cutting room floor and watched all of this. Right. And saw more than what we seen. 
come on now. Yeah. If somebody told her, well, I, this is what Bethany said. Remember, she was asking, genuinely asked. See, Bethany was actually being a friend at that moment, I yeah. feel. When she was like, is she okay? I know her and Adam broke up. It's like, is she, is she yeah. okay? Well, Ramona asked. It was like, she said she seemed very sad. Sad. <laughs> like, she just, and she's, and made it seem like she was trying to be, like, oh, look at her. Yeah. And she wasn't being like that at all. Right. Kara automatically believes her. Yeah. And so now she's riled up about Bethany even more for something that didn't even really happen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now you're believing shit from other people secondhand. And you yeah. know telephone plays a role in everything. Yeah. Especially, especially on yeah. housewife shows. So it's like, yeah, good riddance. C'est la vie, according <laughs> to the Countess. And her Adams, he's put some Instagram pic, picture on Instagram of her with like a G string on, and it was like, "Don't get me wrong, she's in her fifties, she looks yeah. great, but a wrinkly flat booty is not what I want to see." <laughs> it was like, mm, yeah, great for the physique, right? And your age, but I don't want to see this, yeah. No. Very understandable. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, we can move on. Um, I don't know. What do you want to talk about next? Um, let's see. Was there any more reunions? I don't think so. No, I don't think there's any more reunions. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So now if we move on over to our current shows, we have, yeah, Orange County, uh, yes. Jersey. Jersey. Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, shit, and there was something Let's do else. OC, because we haven't really okay. talked about that that much. Vicky put her foot in her mouth again. Mm-hmm. And she's not understanding why Kelly keeps bringing it back up. Like, yeah. I know... V- Vicky's the type of person where you say sorry one time, and she wants you to literally delete it from your memory. It never bank. happened. It yeah. never <laughs> happened. Yeah. And so she doesn't understand why Kelly keeps bringing it up. I am slightly annoyed that Kelly keeps bringing it back up. Because it's like, you guys did talk about it over and over again. Yeah. But at the same time, She's like, I'm going to keep bringing it up until you can finally get this shit through your head. Yeah, that's pretty much... I think that's what mainly why it is, is because Vicky doesn't... She never understands what she does or any of that. She just said, well, you're my friend. I didn't mean to hurt you. It was like... Yeah, you didn't mean to hurt me, but the fact that you did what you did, yeah, so effortlessly is a problem. Yeah, I can't be friends with you. Mm-mm. No, that's why you got to. Even some people that you consider really close, you still have. You're really selective on which friends you tell what to. Like yep. you're not gonna tell one friend absolutely everything. You're not going to tell a different person the same thing you told person one. Yep. So you just kind of just keep things to yourself in a sense because you're like, mm, they're kind of sketchy in this area or they've came, come back and told me stuff and this person's supposed to be their friend. Like I'm yeah. not really about to divulge in this information, especially friends that you feel like can be really judgy. It's like, yeah. I don't need judgment right now. I just want to be open and honest about right. some things. Like I have three people that I can do that with. And even then I'm like, I can't tell everybody everything because A, I don't feel like it. B, right. I don't feel like being judged right now. And C, I just kind of, ra- I'd rather talk to somebody where I can freely talk about something and I'm not going to be like judged about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't mind an opinion. Opinion right. is different of judging. Yeah. So, Vicky... <laughs> Girl, you and Deja and I have no damn friends. <laughs> Steve is only going to be the one that's going to be your friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've made up since. I'm just like, I hope you've learned from this. Which we know you she hasn't. From so. <laughs> I don't think they're ever going to be like regular friends, though, like no. they were before. Yeah. Because didn't... <laughs> it's crazy because everybody was warning Kelly of Vicky in the beginning. Yeah. Where she was trying to be like best friend with Vicky. 
And they were like, you need to be careful because you're coming here and trying to give opinions on something that you don't even know anything about. Yep. And Vicky is X, Y, and Z. Sure enough, in a couple seasons later, it wound up happening, backfiring to Kelly. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what? I didn't do anything. You know, it's just, just man, I didn't do anything. It's like, well, technically you didn't do anything until you had a fucking double date with them. Yeah. Like. Come on now. You can at least right. say, okay, our, our, your ex husband and my boyfriend are friends and he got invited. I'm just like, you know, he's coming over my house. Yeah. He does. I can't dictate who comes to your house. Yeah. Especially when the men friendship is definitely different than the female right. male friendship. But I mean, you can at least tell me what's going on. Yeah. Just, yeah. But as far as double date, that's like, okay, I draw. I, I think anybody would draw the line at yeah, that point. It really would. I'm not about to help you seek love. <laughs> the fuck? This isn't uh, tough love or right. love connection or anything. I'm not about to do all yeah. that. And, and the she, fact that she didn't get it was like that. She kept saying, well, I'm not choosing it. sides. It's like, right. bitch. It's like, I know you get it because I know you're not that dumb. And you are one of those people that expects way too much of your friends to not get it. You just don't want to admit that you're wrong. Because she lit a fire under Tamara's ass because she felt like she didn't have Brooks back. Right. So why is it any different with this situation? Mm -hmm. You wanted your homegirl to have your back. Why can't she have your home? But then when your homegirl tells you, hey, I'm hurt, you're like, well, you're divorced. You should be over it. Right. Bitch, you say what? Say that Still, my ex husband. We just yeah. It's just the ink ain't even really all the way dry yeah, yet. It's like you you just found ways. Like you knew that this conversation with Kelly was gonna come, so you already figured out. Like you know what? You've already justified it in your head, right? As to why you don't think you're wrong, but you know you're wrong. Yeah, I think the worst part was yeah. just her finding out she, from other people. Yeah, because it's like you're not even like. A blase friend that's like, well, I don't really expect that much from my friends. So, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You are always talking about, like, loyalty and you don't do this and having my back and everything. So the fact that you can go and do something that neglectful of Kelly's feelings is like, mm, no. I, I don't believe that you didn't see what you were doing. Must be my friend, my sister, my Yeah, sister. I'm like, no. Mm-mm. Yeah. You knew. She's very selfish in all in all your arenas and yeah. areas. Like she she does exhibit some ways of being a French being a friend to you. Yeah. But the time where it really, really matters, like she's really good at giving you a casserole. Yeah. Casserole, she will call you if you got a surgery, blah, blah, blah. She's really good at that. But when it comes to real stuff that really matters, she's not like, really she's not really good at it. Don't be going on double dates with my ex-husband. No. <laughs> or don't be telling people that my husband's gay or that he beats me. <laughs> like it's like the stuff that she's bad at is like really Vicky, horrible. this is so basic like, like you should you know could... these things like yeah i'm pretty sure your mom god rest her soul taught you better than yeah that. and she she just doesn't get it because she's always yeah and she's got all insurance my mom was right this. i was just it's, it's too much yeah how do you feel about the new housewives um emily and gina i for the most part so far i kind of like them um which one do you like more than the other one? I think Emily is the one from New York, right? That's Gina. Gina. I kind of like Gina a little bit more. I do too. And yeah. And being from California, I hate that she was right. But I'm like, your assessment of California women, is it's, it's so right. So I'm like, I can't even be mad at you. That was the one um, I said she did the spear fingers and she seemed like yeah. she was annoying. <laughs> I was very yeah. mistakenly wrong um, for my assessment. Yeah, Gina, I don't have a problem or anything with her. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, her husband is, he's one of those husbands. I was like, oh, okay. That's the one who filed for a divorce. No, not Gina. Emily's husband. Oh, okay. He's Yeah, he's going to be one of those like, 
I should be holding an orange too. Oh, uh, Patricia. Yeah. Ah, um, Patricia of this of this city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Well, and... we can segue into that because this whole situation of the game night. First mm-hmm. of all, love Shannon's outfit. Yeah. She takes themes to a whole new level. She does. <laughs> but of course it wasn't filmed. I guess the filming or had already left or whatever. Yeah. Um, I had heard about it. Mind you guys, there's a lot of shows that we have to watch for this fucking podcast. Mm -hmm. I do not watch them all on time. I'm literally watching eight episodes today to to be able to, and I watch kind of what I want during the week or whatever. So I didn't, I heard, saw the clips of Gina getting kicked out by Emily's husband and he was like yelling or whatever. So when I finally saw him, I'm like, yeah, she kind of was being loud. Yeah. However, you decide to throw legitimate party. Yeah. Where you hire people to come set up. Right. Cook. Be the poker host. Right. Teach people how to play poker and have alcohol. Yeah. And you choose to do this in your home inside with children upstairs. Right. And it's like, even if you felt like she was being loud, that's when you go to your wife and you tell her, hey, can you tell her? Because I know if I'm married. Or honey, come up here. Yes. Yeah. Like, I I feel like conversation should be man to man and, and woman, woman to and woman. man. Because I don't want nobody's yeah. husband coming talking to me about anything. Not at all. And I don't ever want to put myself in the position where I'm talking to another man. Yeah. Because then that just creates a whole... When there's like, a couple situation yeah. going on. Yeah. Like, and then you're a man. So, I understand that's your house. And maybe she probably was being too loud. But I don't understand why... I don't know why you just didn't feel like, you know what? Let me tell my wife to tell her to, like, can she lower her voice? True. I just don't understand why you would have your children in the goddamn house in the first place. Yeah. Your sister-in-law lives literally across the street. Yeah. You can hire a nanny and say, hey, nanny, go across the street. We about to live it up right now. Right. And I don't want to care about nobody's damn volume. Yeah. At that point. I think that was the first offense. Because you can't have a party, a full-on three-course meal and poker involved with alcohol and expect everybody to be at a low decibel. Yeah. But, okay, and then let's go back to what you were saying. He should have definitely said, Emily, can you come up here really mm-hmm. quick? And say, who the fuck is yelling at my Can you talk down? Who's hell- yelling at my And house? I'm pretty sure it would have went completely different. Wouldn't have even been a situation. And she would have definitely thought about it like, how? what's the best way I can approach the situation? And I'm pretty sure, which is something I would have done, the next time she was actually loud, I'd be like, oh, sweetie, I thought you have a good time, yeah. but my kids are trying to go to sleep upstairs. Yeah, it's, can you it's like, winding down. Time. Yeah, it's winding like, down time. You know, she. I right. think she would have handled it a little bit differently. Yeah. But for him to have a conversation about how I don't like those kind of women, those loud women, yeah. those women like that are annoying. Well, oh, you know, we don't like men who can't finish law school. Like, <laughs> so we can both talk about things we don't like. Let's have a conversation. And he was just like a dick because even when Emily was like, oh, she actually did want to apologize, even though she felt like you were wrong how you came at her. Mm -hmm. I understand. I have children too. What does that have to do with anything? He didn't even let her finish. Yeah. It's like, uh, that means she understands you have your kids in the house. So you don't want it all loud and rambunctious. Like just being a little asshole and I'm very glad that, Kelly is going to rip into his ass. Exclamation next. on little. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy Kelly's going to rip into his ass. I don't fuck with little men no more. Next. I can't do uh, it. Episode. <laughs> Leprechauns need not apply. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I felt like he was way out of line. And it's mm-hmm. like You look dusty. You ain't even cute. <laughs> right. That's how I feel it's like you don't and then what made it worse is that Emily's telling Gina, like, oh, yeah, my husband can be an asshole and blah, 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 blah. 
But then I feel like they're going to be feuding in the next episode a little bit about this whole... Now it's going to be this whole thing that goes over half the goddamn season. Yeah. Which I'm not looking forward to. Yeah. I mean, it looked as if, like, this last episode last night, Mm -hmm. when they all went golfing for Vicky's uh, birthday, that on their end, between them two, it looked like it got resolved. Because she did hit her with the low blow. Emily hit Gina with the low blow and was like, well... It's not really fair to compare husbands because yours isn't even around. And that's when Gina was like, hold up, bitch. And But what was the, what was the point of even bringing that up? Because um, in the episode before, they were all at dinner, mm-hmm. minus Emily. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about the situation of how her husband like yelled at Gina. Mm-hmm. And they were like, that's not cool. And I guess Shannon made a comment and was like, you telling me like how he was yelling at her. reminds her yes. of her marriage, and yeah. so then I guess Gina, Gina went Emily. back to Emily, mm-hmm. but basically had told her she she said everything in the right way. She was like, she did say this, and she was like, Shannon did say this, but she was like, she did admit like, okay, well maybe I'm probably just you know projecting, yes, and it wasn't even that serious, and then. Emily uh-huh. goes to confront Shannon, but and then, use the word abuse. yeah, and that's when it was like, ugh. yeah, I'm like telephone. Yeah, I saw the See, clip. One yeah, little word, but yeah, adding the word abuse is yeah. definitely. Going and Shannon to, was like, after my history with the word of abuse and being I accused, would, yeah, I'm, like, I I'm not even gonna do that. No, yeah, but what I will say, I'm pretty confused I on. Think is I like, know what you're gonna say, Tamara and Shannon's friendship. Well, I'm not confused. I feel like Tamara's confused because I'm like, on one clip, you say you're crying because Shannon and Kelly is hanging out and you feel left out. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, you're saying, you said it in confessionals and you're saying it to your mom. Like, it's so draining being her friend. It's very one-sided. Like, she calls me for hours and all she does is just unload and it could be draining. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... I get that, but it's like, well, which one do you want? Do you want her to just call you every day and drain you? Or do you want her to go off with Kelly and build a friendship? Like, they're both going through a divorce. Uh They're both, like, maybe, like, okay, you know what? Let her go live her life, get back in the funk of things. Mm -hmm. And maybe right now, being around another divorced person it's probably somebody she can relate to a little bit better. And then yeah. on the other hand, you're like, well, you're starting to work out and, you know, I could help you with that or I could do that. And it's like, well, which one? Do you want her to be dependent upon you or mm. do you want her to just go and have a life I think it's kind of-, of the same situation with Carol and Bethany. I feel like. Shannon is a specific type of person and her reciprocity and friendship might not align with what Tamara is expecting. Yeah. Around the time when Shannon started to unload on Tamara and the very, the very first sign was the whole cheating thing. Yeah. And she had been an open ear. And of course that brought right. them closer together. And it's but been she's like forgetting that Shannon was Vicky's friends first. Yeah. And when they fell out, she drew to Tamara. Mm-hmm. Now, Shannon and Tamara didn't fall out. Yeah. What I, I think is happening is that a lot of stuff is going on in Tamara's life at the same, same time, time that Shannon is also going through yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. And guess who is being more relatable at this point? Kelly. Yeah. Kelly just... Yeah. Sign the papers. Right. So, of course, she's going to draw to Kelly a little bit more because at that moment, she's the most understanding of the situation that she's going, going through. through. And Tamara is really only, only going to go based off experience yes. that was years and years and years right. prior. Yeah. So, I feel like, especially with the few that Shannon and Kelly used to have. Yeah. And now they have something on, in common. So they're not only are they building a friendship that had just flourished really the end of last season. Yeah. They also have something in common right now. 
And unfortunately, she can't focus on other people yeah. right and I now. Th- exactly. And I think for Tamara, I feel like at this point, she has a lot going on with like Eddie and her business. And though that's very valid to be like, well, dang, I feel like with Shannon, it's one sided right now. Uh-huh. But I think she just needs to be like, not necessarily in the friendship with Shannon, not that at all, but just be like, okay, you can be a lot. Mm-hmm. You have a lot going on and I have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let you just go with Kelly. And, you know, Vicky and Mm -hmm. get adjusted to the single life and Mm -hmm. live your life. And then I'm going to kind of pull back. And then when we can get back to where we are supposed to be, then I'm just going to do that. But I feel like there's a certain type of conversation that you have to have in these times. When you have somebody who you consider a really good dear friend... And if you know that there's been an alter in the dynamic of your friendship, yeah, I feel like the best conversation to have is say, hey, I've noticed that we haven't talked as much yeah. or blah, blah, blah. What is going on with you yeah. that I don't know about? Then I've also noticed Tamara has said plenty of times, like, every time I try to talk to Shannon, she just turns it into, do you know what I'm going through? Or you make this about me, which... It's not good to assume, Mm. but I'm just kind of like, maybe for right now, Tamara, just if you see that in some ways Shannon is pulling back from you, Mm -hmm. not necessarily because there's a problem, but she's just like, okay, I'm just hanging out with Kelly a little bit more. Mm. But then on the other hand, when she's not pulling back, it's a, you're draining me. You're calling me screaming about paying a water bill. Just kind of. Take the time. I think she's about only Eddie. Doing, I think she's only doing that because she's not getting the same back. Yeah. I think she's only saying that because she's not allowed to unload and vent to Shannon. Yeah. That's the only re- I feel like if Shannon did call after Eddie got out of out of surgery. Yeah. If she was able to call Shannon and she picked up and she was able to stay on the phone for an hour or whatever about how worried she was about Eddie's health, it wouldn't be a situation like that. Right. But at the same time, if you are a true friend to a person, you have to know, A, I didn't do shit for this person to really pull away from me in the first fucking place. So if you can really affirm that to yourself, like, okay, well, something must be going on. Right. If, if that's the thing, that's part that's confusing you because Tamara keeps complaining about it. Yeah. So she's not, it's like, okay, well, one minute you don't want her to come to you for everything all the time. Yeah. And then the other minute when she does go to somebody who's relatable, you're like, I have FOMO and I fear of missing out. And I'm like, well, what about me? That's the part that was confusing to me. It ultimately ultimately boils down to what about me? Yeah. That's the biggest thing out of all of the situation. I feel like she complains about Shani unloading because. She doesn't. She's not able to unload. You're right. That's uh, yeah. It, it that's just really what it boils down to. Yeah. And Shannon has so much on her mind, and she she knows how Shannon is though. Yeah. When Shannon gets focused on one thing, yeah, it's like fucking blinders. Yeah. And she has to constantly try to get her out of it, get her out of it, get yeah. her out of it. Well, if you know that's how Shannon is, you can't expect her to see anything outside of herself or whatever is. Similar to what she's going through. Right. So, of course, she's going to um, gravitate towards Kelly. Of course, she's going to gravitate to the situation with Emily and her husband yelling at another woman. Because that's going yeah. to, you know. That's what she's. Going to reflect. And she's going to, you know, project her marriage on that situation. It's going to bring out to her. So, A, the situation with Eddie is not something she can really connect to right now. Because she has her own shit that she's dealing with with the mm-hmm. husband that she just had to get rid of and B it's like she's she's just caught in herself right now I don't think she's naturally like that yeah where she's caught in herself because she's shown herself to be very caring with she how is. she was with with Vicky yeah and and Brooks yeah 
So it's not that she doesn't know how to do that. I just think the timing of it is not the best. And then Tamara keeps snapping at her. Yeah. I think she's frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, girl, just let her go off with Kelly. You go live your life with Eddie. Yeah. Y'all friendship, it when the time is right, the conversation will happen. And I mean, things yeah. happen. Friends get to a place where something comes up. It's really huge. And, or not even if it's like a bad thing. Maybe you just want to, you know what? I've been dealing with my life for 20, 30, 40 years, whatever the case may be. I want to do things different. They can do something different. That doesn't necessarily mean that you did anything. Yeah. And if you're not willing to adjust with them, with the dynamic changing in the friendship, then mm-hmm. maybe you should just let go of the friendship. But if yeah. you are okay with adjusting with it, then it'll be fine. Yeah. I'm like, I don't. It just takes getting used to. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think it shouldn't be the end of their friendship. I, I don't no, want it to be. I don't think like, it should I, be. I definitely think that there is love in between. The, there's love there. And I feel like if Tamara does talk to Shannon, just be like, so the root of my hurt isn't even that you're hanging out with Kelly. It's the fact that. What about me? Yeah. Like, and not even in the sense of what about me not going out to hang out with y'all, but like the deep shit, you know, my husband and everything. Yeah, this bitch but, all the way to LA for dinner. Right. So what the fuck? <laughs> right. And I'm like, you know, and maybe, you know, right now, Kelly is where Shannon needs to be. Like, let me teach you how to go be a cougar on these streets. Right? Get these men like, and that's why she's gonna automatically right gravitate, and that's what she Kelly. needs. As opposed to she still loves you, but you got a husband to go home to, right. and you have a husband to go home to that still hangs out with her ex husband. True. So it's like a, it's not necessarily like a, I don't like you, Tamara. It's just kind of like. So now that you bring up that point between the two of them, two of them, who do you feel like is more self? Hmm. Looking at everything. Make your brain work. Right. I'm <laughs> going to say. And this is like, if it was a poll, this is like 42, 52, 48. I'm going to say Tamara for the simple fact of like. She's gravitating towards somebody that, A, she never even had a friendship with. So just the fact that they can go out to dinner in another that's city. A by, huge that's thing. huge. Like, wait, y'all two? They were in a car an hour and a half. Yeah. Like, wait, in y'all traffic two? traffic to LA. And. What, what restaurant did they go to? <laughs> we need to go. Right. <laughs> and they're both divorced. And Shannon's. Recently in the, divorced. Yeah. And Shannon's in the process where she's like. I want to date, but I don't feel confident about my body. And Mm -hmm. I have all this other type of stuff as to where Kelly was like, let's sign these goddamn papers and kudos. I've got like, that's kind of right now Mm -hmm. the friend that Shannon needs to hang out with. Like if I was in the group, I'm not saying I wouldn't be friends with Shannon, but I would probably be like, hey, I'm here for you, but you should go hang out with Kelly. Like, I think that's... That is actually a really good point. That's I feel the friend like she needs. The friend you need is like, okay, what is the best fit for you yeah. right now? It, it is... That's actually right. something I would do. I like, love you, you know what? You should but talk to... But I got my to, own shit going on I'm right like, now. You and should I... talk to X, Y, and Z because... Yeah. I'm not really... That's not... I, I can mean, be a shoulder to cry on. I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. But the person that's actually going to get you out of this funk and, mm-hmm. like, probably really help you mm-hmm. ain't me. And I think Kelly and Shannon, especially with them being freshly divorced, can both learn something from each other. Mm-hmm. Especially and Shannon learning from Kelly. Because I, yeah, I really want Shannon to win. I want her I to do. come back next I, I know she's dating I somebody. Do. I saw in some blogs. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I really just want her to come back next season, like... Feeling all pretty, and you like, know what you see, but you see the look, the interview look yeah. with the white shirt and the ponytail. Yeah, I put it, I uh, shared it on Insta on our Instagram like a, a week or so ago, 
And I said, look at her. Look at all spicy right. with this little ponytail. She looks cute. Yeah. It's like, I think yeah. she, that's the friend that she needs right now. Yeah. And I think Tamara should kind of just be like. She's so stuck on her gym. Yeah. If not, <laughs> it is. Uh, obviously, she has lower self-esteem and confidence because she is at a weight that she probably has never, never been, been in in her 53 years of life. Her husband made her feel like her, shit for happiness. Yes, she just got divorced. She's around all you in shape bitches. But it's it's more than just her aesthetics. Right. I feel like she's broken inside. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot more than just going to the gym. It is. She can lose the weight tomorrow, and I don't. I still don't feel like she will be. Yeah. Her herself when she was in her twenties before right. she married David. Right. Like she has to get back to a place where she can be. Bitch, yes, I'm a cougar. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cow. God damn no. Right. But. Yeah, and I feel like the best person for that is surprisingly fucking Kelly. It is. And I love me some Kelly. Mm-hmm. We need to go to the quiet women when we go back to California oh, together yeah. sometime. Yeah, I think they're really, yeah. And I think with everything that Tamara got going on, she needs to be like, you know, and plus, you got a lot going on. I got a lot going on. So you go hang out with her and I will catch you later. And mm-hmm. we will talk about... The aesthetics of the yes. one-sidedness later. Instead of worrying, like, well, why wasn't I invited? You could ask her just like, well, how did it go? Because yeah. like, I was really confused. Because it went from one episode, I feel left out, to you talking to your mom. Like, she's so draining. She just calls me and it's just, ugh. And, th- and she said that before in previous seasons. True, like, So I'm did. like, that's when I was like, so which one is it? Is it? it? <laughs> Do you want her to lean on you for everything or do you want her to, which I, mean, I guess Kelly now it makes would a little be, more sense. Yeah. But. I think, yeah, she's only doing it because she feels like she's not right. being reciprocated. Girl, go vent to Vicky. Go let that, <laughs> or. Yeah, Eddie ain't having that. <laughs> he said, I will have a heart attack before I go over there and be friends with her. Yeah. Or she was close. I know. She, I think she said she's known Emily for three years. But they fell out. Oh. No, she knew, yeah, Emily. Yeah. But she fell out over the situation. Remember that guy was spreading the rumor about Eddie at that party? Oh, yes. I think she was there. And she knew him and they fell out. Ooh. Yeah. And then they just reconnected recently, like in the last year or so. Ooh, girl, wow. Yeah, yeah. And call they, Alexis. I think I think Tamara thought she was involved because yeah. she was friends with them. Oh. And she was like guilty by association, bitch. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. <laughs> Sometimes that guilty by association. Like, you know what? Everybody. Fuck everybody. Fuck <laughs> you. Fuck you. you. Everybody is <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I but, have no fucks. It's like, ooh, well. Oh, well. my God. I just okay. Let's finish this one. I'll yeah, bring up my, my thoughts. So, but that's pretty much the gist of OC. Yeah, we can't really go into depth of one episode at a time because we don't have yeah. time. That's that, pretty much everything. Yeah, though. that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah, I like mm-hmm. Gina better than Emily. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see Emily tell Kelly she wants to kill her, and <laughs> but Kelly calls her husband. You're a little bitch. <laughs> Needy part two. Was she was like, "You're a little bitch, huh?" <laughs> like, you know how Kelly's voice said, "You're picture. a little bitch, huh?" I'm surprised she didn't start. No wonder you're a little bitch. <laughs> no wonder you're a little bitch, huh? <laughs> Probably she didn't start off with a no. But we got to see the full clip. Maybe she did slip a no wonder in there. Yeah, <sighs> classic, classic. So yeah, I never thought I would actually like her. Kelly. Outburst was needed. That first that. season of hers was not a good one. <laughs> well, it was, really, oh, really wasn't. But she she's redeemed herself and centered. And I, I, I feel like she, she gives me good life yeah. on OC. It was getting kind of boring. Yeah, for a while. And Gina from the from Staten is it Staten Island, yeah. or Long Island, Staten Island. She gives me. I like her. Yes. Her assessment of California women is pretty, pretty well. <laughs> right. And cal- rich California white women. Oh, yeah. At that. 
Yeah, so it's definite. It's real different. I just hate that that she had to. She's going through a divorce and all that, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like you kind of see it I'm seeing coming. it coming. Like you can't really. Yeah, so I would have been popping up on a Tuesday night. What's up, Lucy? <laughs> Wait, what's that? Uh, that video. It's like a meme video. My sister, I posted it. It was like a little baby in the car, like, "What's up?" Uh, right. <laughs> and then the mom was like, "Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would be like. So. And that's the only thing that irritated me. She kept saying Northern LA. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is Northern <laughs> gotta, LA? I gotta pull out my map. <laughs> Silver Lake? <laughs> like, I'm just thinking North, North. Right. Echo Wonder Park? North? Like, I'm yeah. just, yeah. Anyway, I guess since she's not a local. Yeah. That she probably heard it and was like, ah, North. LA. It's like the northern part of LA. So like, North girl, LA. You no, gotta be well, specific. No. It's only <laughs> specific. West LA and East LA. Right. South, South LA, LA we the media tried, but they don't want to use South LA. You know how they stop using South Central? Yeah, South LA. I'm yeah, like, it's a South Los Angeles. Nah, nigga, that's South Central. For a split second, I thought it was a part of LA that was nice too. I was like, ooh, South LA. Wait a minute, what? No, right <laughs> over there on, on Imperial and Western. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's, I would never. Gentrification. I would never. I passed by Southwest College the other day. I said, oh. shit looks nice. It's all got barkeys and shit. Man, all types of little upgrades. Right? Certification. I was like, oh, I just, I don't even know why I was in that area. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was driving around bored. I don't know. I don't go in those parts. <laughs> well, I don't get out the car, I should say. <laughs> At least. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. At least I don't, don't get out the car. No. Yeah. But um, the reunion we forgot to talk about. Teen Mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Part two came on on Monday. I, yeah. Totally forgot about those parts. <laughs> those parts. And it was just weird because we've talked about this whole situation between Bri- Brianna and Kale many a time. Yeah. And kind of how we stand on the whole situation. You. Give no fucks about Kale. Yeah. No, just yeah. Just no, no you don't. I'll be trying to find I some, am in, in the while. position I root for Kale, but yeah. she be fucking up. And after this whole situation and them kind of explaining individually about how um things played out on stage, mm-hmm. I felt like I really, and this is not because I, I root for Kale, just going off of Brianna's react behavior. Just yeah. solely on her. Yeah. I feel like she was trying to just be on camera with that bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because if she was in a close situation with yeah. far fewer people and she can use her reflexes to jump over a table really quickly. Why not do that while y'all was in the room? Because Very a likely true. likelihood of you breaking away and be able to actually punch that bitch in the face yeah. would have been more likely than you coming out on stage. Yeah. And then you make yourself look like an ass yeah. because you're literally falling over tables trying to get to where Brittany and Kel are fighting. Yeah, that was a lot. It was way too... And now you got all the white people that watch the show calling you ratchet. And you the colored one between the two of you. Mm -hmm. You got to play the smart girl. Yeah. You you didn't play that one right at all. At all. And so when they had her own individual talks with Dr. Drew and Nessa... Well, Dr. Drew, I don't think Nessa came out when they were talking out individually. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, she came in there ready to fight. And I'm thinking, Brianna's always talking about fucking somebody up. Yeah. So why weren't you prepared to fight when you knew you was about to go in that room with her? Right. She didn't want to talk. You said you didn't want to talk. Yeah. You the type of person talking about I'm a fuck a bitch up on site. Yeah. So you know you got to be prepared. Mm-hmm. And so 
when I was like listening to the recording when they were in the room, she was like, why are you acting like this? And she also said, stay over there. No. And one thing that now I can bring Kel, what Kel was like, well, she told me when I see her to keep the same energy. So I kept the same energy. Mm -hmm. I said, "Mm, can't be mad at that. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, so it's like yeah. it it Brianna. It makes you look like a dumbass when you talk a certain type of way on social media, yeah. but behind closed doors, you didn't do anything. But on camera, you did something. That makes it seem like you want to keep up the appearance of quote unquote internet thug right. that Kel had yelled out. When they were trying to separate y'all two. Yeah. And if you want to keep this reputation like I mean what I say and I say what I mean, then you should have tried to whip that bitch ass in the in the clo- behind closed doors without no cameras. That is true. There was no need to do that on camera. You got to get panties just flying out <laughs> to the world. You got yeah. cuts on your leg from flying over a table. Yeah. You look like a dumbass in front of all these damn people. Yeah. It's just, it makes you look bad all around. Like, I would have been like, oh, she want to have a meeting with me? Okay. And you know what you just said about, you know, yeah. the whole situation? Like, pretty much alleged that she's a domestic violence victim. Right. So, with your words, you better be prepared at the blowback. Right. Mm-hmm. So, my hair would have been in the ponytail too, bitch. Yeah. Like, uh, we about to see. Because if it gets funky, I'm going to be ready. Mm-hmm. And that's the only really I didn't I just remember that I didn't really get to finish watching. Yeah, in the middle of work. <laughs> so I do have to finish the the last half with what you call it, Chelsea, Leah, and Janelle. Yeah, Janelle and Kale been going at on it at it. How on. did that start? Okay, so I actually you know how they all have like. Click the link, you know, uh, fuck this person, click the link and make sure you yeah. read the article. So today I did it for the first time because yeah. it was like, fuck you, Janelle, click yeah. the link below. I said, click, what happened? Right. <laughs> so I think it all started because they were close, Janelle and Kale. Yeah. She was like, well, what, what the show didn't show you was that Kale, A, bailed her out of jail. Oh. And picked her up in like New York or Jersey or something yeah. like that. B was like pretty much trying to help her get off drugs. Yeah. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to get sued by nobody. Right. And it just got all types of fucked up. One of the very first things where it really started to go awry was when Janelle announced that Kale was pregnant prior to when she wanted to. Oh. And... Honestly, I'm going to be honest. I didn't read anything in the article to where it was worthy of it getting this bad. I'm just going to let you know. They both got three kids by three men. Right. One used to be married. One is married. He's definitely a Mm -hmm. (laughs) douchebag. Javi is a manipulative douchebag, Mm -hmm. but they're both Mm douchebags nonetheless. Um, one went to college, one didn't. Mm -hmm. The only thing really is that Janelle's been out of jail so many fucking times that it's just, so uh, on on paper, Kale's winning. Yeah. She ain't never really been to jail. All her baby daddies are around. Mm -hmm. Like she has, I mean, she already has a house. That's not really an issue, but she doesn't really have so much negative legal stuff. In legal, <laughs> yeah, it's literally running your background yeah. check. You're not going to hire yeah. me because I have all this bullshit. Right. Speaking of shit, pause. Do you know Kiefer got in trouble with the law recently? I have even And I've been meaning to good goddamn post this on fucking our Instagram. So Kiefer pled guilty for running the meth lab. Take some intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, not just selling, not, oh. Running a mess lab. I, I'm, it's not right. <laughs> but in the words of Miss Houston, wait, no, it's probably not right to quote her in this instance. Crack it well. But, no, <laughs> but I, I guess that's, wow. That's, 
the most mo- the most intelligent crime you can't out have of him and Janelle. <laughs> At least he wasn't the cooker. He was the runner. The runner. He was the that. big boss. He organized. Of a <laughs> That's oh, maybe Kiefer ain't so stupid after all. Yes. Maybe Kiefer was a keeper. He was stupid when he got <laughs> caught. <laughs> is a key. <laughs> all right that's her but, drug husband that's not cool that's but. her drug husband damn let's well. be real her and Kiefer were meant to be together <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if they found their way back yeah i, I always kind of hope that they will find <laughs> just because of- their way like excluding the drugs part yeah that's not i'm not advocating for anybody to be a drug addict yeah they're like kids and stuff involved before (laughs) kids well more additional kids got involved (laughs) i was like maybe key freaking you know gotta get his shit together maybe they can only smoke weed together right not do injectables (laughs) and kids spend anywhere between 18 and 36 months in jail right that's crazy well, completely crazy. May the force be with him. Um, <laughs> Maybe spit out my wine. Oh, <laughs> are you going to drink this shard? Oh, or not? sorry, I've been whack. I'm on my just finished the second glass. The fuck is going on? Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I need CC Liberta back. <laughs> Girl. Not with the whole liver thing, but you know, well, no, I take that back. No, she never had liver thing, but no, <laughs> no. <laughs> the rate I was going exactly, she could have, she right. could have. Uh, um, but I just felt like that whole situation between Brianna said she's over it, and then they brought up the whole situation with Devon. She said that Devon was doing good, but then it got to the point where he was just. Playing video games and stuff all day. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't Brianna, I would believe her. Yeah. Because Brianna has a tendency of saying that these niggas don't do shit and they be doing <laughs> shit. <laughs> right. Just like. Yeah. The only thing I can I can't really say that he ain't done nothing is Luis because he moved back to New York. He said, well, you know what? If all I can have is a check. And she was like, well, he don't even do anything. She's like, I take that back. He, he pays for daycare. He and I'm thinking. <laughs> Bitch, that still ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Let's be real. Let's yeah. be real. I don't know how many single parents listen to our podcast. I'm one myself. Paying for, let's say, child care does not mean a man is present or doing yeah. anything really of true significance for that child. Right. All that is doing is helping you in your pockets. Right. But that's not helping rear the it's rearing of a child. In the long run. There's nothing that that 200 some dollars you're getting a month for child care where that child can say, hey, you know what? When they were 19, you know, my dad used to teach me how to throw a, throw a basketball or ride mm-hmm. a bike or how to get away from boys or how to get away I from girls. Say, how to get away from murder. <laughs> Too much ID channel. <laughs> And it ain't wine because you ain't really had none. My dad used to teach me how to, you know, throw a bike, get away with murder. <laughs> like, that's my type of dad. <laughs> how to get away with murder? You want that kind of dad? Some shit of some essence that I can use. Oh, my goodness. Like, you know what? My dad taught me this in the seventh grade. Get some chloroform. <laughs> get some pure sodium, throw it in the pool. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> <sighs> not get away from murder right but get away from boys and girls yeah. you know things that really that like you remember i can think about stuff that i did with my dad mm-hmm. it had nothing to do with what he whatever he was paying or not paying to my mom yeah so ultimately that's helping you but that's not really helping with their child no. like you they can he can pay you Two thousand dollars a month. That doesn't necessarily mean mean that he's doing all that right. he can for and that. In your child. book, you're gonna be like, he's a good dad, but then your kid's gonna turn eighteen and be like I didn't have no dad. He wasn't there, and then you're gonna be like, Yes, he was always there. No, he wasn't. No. But, so, Some things it's like money is if not you have always. to choose 
and people are not going to be like, bitch, I ain't going to choose. If you have to choose between the financial help that you get, not even help, yeah. the financial part of raising a child or the actual hands-on rearing and co-parenting of a child, mm-hmm. what would you pick? I the have- money or the actual hands-on part of being a parent? I have always said, if I can have it, mm-hmm. and I end up in this situation, I don't even want any child support. I want 50-50 custody, one week with you, one week with me, because then I think that's how like one parent and more, nine times out of ten, it's the mom. They're the ones that's like, yeah. they don't really have much of a life outside of their kids. They're the ones that's getting stuck. <laughs> don't I motherfucking everything. know. <laughs> and the dad is just like, all right, I'll see you every other weekend. Or if you live in another state, like, I'll see you vacation. It's not and, fair. Yeah, so I'm like, no, no, no. I Yeah, I would be in that court. I don't want no child support. You are going to have the same struggle that I have. And we're going to split this shit 50-50. And guess well, I'm what? moving. We, we moving. <laughs> Like, no. And it's it's funny you bring that up. That's why I kind of feel like Joe deserves to have 50 50 50 custody. He should. Because he literally moved and said, I... You move my child and I want to be closer to my child. And he's not a problem. And my girlfriend are coming to be closer to my child. And there's nothing about him that's like, okay, he's not that unsafe or unfit parent. Mm -hmm. So... No. I mean, Kale was right when she was talking about her epi- one of the episodes, like, doing agreeing to 50-50 custody is hard mm-hmm. because you feel like you're just giving up something. But an important part that you brought up is something that I'm going through was like, why am I forced right. to do everything by and myself? And then you have resentment. And yeah. it's like, and then it's over time. And then that's kind of like by Kale being like, well, you're kind of giving up something. It's like, so what you're saying is that him being a father is not as important as you being a mother. It would have been had she not signed 50 50. Yeah. So it's like, that no, means she let's... did think the priority of Isaac being with yeah. his father more priority over her selfishness yeah. of having more custody. Right. Like, no, we're both going to, if there's a job, it's like, dang, I have to coordinate this. We're both going to experience that. Oh, we want to go on a date. Oh, is it my week? Or do I have to, we are both going to live our lives yeah. around this kid. I mean, don't get me <laughs> wrong. I did have two months by myself. Cool. Yeah. But honestly, if I had to pick... I would do 50-50. Yeah. Like, I've been a single mom long enough, my son is seven years old, to be like, you know what? I feel like you have the opportunity to live your life. You have the opportunity to get married. You have the opportunity to have a kid. I don't really get those privileges. Give me my two weeks out of the month. (laughs) Yeah. And And it's like, I can take the time off that I need to. I can go on the vacations that I want to go to. I can just do nothing and spend all day. All week in my room, butt ass naked while I'm not working, and right. it'll be fine. You know, yeah. I feel like you should be able to do as just as much as I do. Exactly. And I'm like, I don't know where life is going to take me, but I'm like, God, should I end up in that situation? I'm hope that that's something that is like. God forbid yeah. that you're in that situation because I don't want to wish that on right. anybody. I don't want anybody to experience that. Yeah. But. It like, is to a point where if it was a situation where, you know, my son's father wasn't 3,000 miles away, mm-hmm. I, I, at this point, I'd be like, you know what? Let me go and do 50-50. Yeah. Because I, I get drained. It's, it's very, very draining. Yeah. And so I don't understand women who can be like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm mama and daddy. I don't need no nigga. I can do you it all don't, on my own. You don't, but the kid does. Right. Like, that's, that's, that's the <laughs> thing. It's not about you. you. Yeah. It's not. It it's really about isn't you. about you. So people are like, oh, you let him be, your son be away for two months? I said, you damn the fuck right. Mm-hmm. I just spent all school year taking this kid to school every day, picking him up yeah. every day, making lunches every day, cooking every day, doing homework, PTA. I need a, I need a goddamn break. Mm-hmm. So if, that, if I had to go nine months and get two months off, I 
will accept the two months if that's right. all I can get. I can't complain because I put myself in a situation where I'm going to be a single parent. And that's another thing, too. It's like, I don't feel all that sorry for these girls that have multiple kids by multiple women because it's like... um, Bitch, when did you learn? By women. (laughs) By multiple men, I meant to say. Yeah. It's like, you had the first one. Right. You had the first one. Right. It's like, when are you going to (laughs) learn? And when I had my first one? Baby came out, IUD went in. I wasn't playing. <laughs> and it's till to this day, I've had those maybes. I've had no nothing. <laughs> right. Because I didn't want to go through what I went through already. Mm-hmm. And so when you got people like three, you got two three for threes on Team Mom 2 between Janelle and uh-huh. Kale. It's like, why didn't y'all learn? Yeah, it's like, okay, financially, that's not a big worry for you. But it's like, you still have other stuff outside of finances. So Right. <sighs> if it was a regular situation in a regular world, yeah, it would be like, come on now. Like, it's just, how you got kid yeah. number three? And the only difference is that Kel got married for baby number two. Mm-hmm. And Janelle got married for baby number three. Yeah. But at what point, it's like, I don't under, especially fucking Janelle. Yeah. Janelle don't know how to be by herself. Yeah. At all. At all. Mm-hmm. And Kel doesn't know how to be by herself, but in a very different way. Yeah. She doesn't know how to be by herself in a day to day. That's correct. Not necessarily love life. Yeah. Girl, she, ain't nothing better than just coming home and and nobody's fucking there. <laughs> just sprawl out, right. draws only. Leave I just want to be. Room, leave like, me. Somebody the, might call, but I did the just only knock on the door is gonna be Pizza Hut. Right, it's me and Mariska Hargate having a good old time to ourselves. The Netflix, right? That's Olivia Benson from SVU for y'all. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but yeah. You know, I, it's just at some point at some point you do have to be okay with being by yourself. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, since she took Kale decided to keep filling up her womb with children. Yeah. When one kid goes, it's like you don't at least I can do that because I have one. Yeah. And you know what? Pause. I have a rant. Can y'all motherfuckers stop asking people who got one kid when they gonna have more? <laughs> Do you see a motherfucking ring on my finger? Right. It's a Do lot. you hear me mention that I got a man? Right. Why the fuck are you asking me if I'm gonna have more kids? <laughs> no, I, it ain't not. First of all, it ain't none of your damn business. Right. Second of all, I'm fat as hell and I'm trying to lose this weight before I even do anything <laughs> else. Second of all, I got shit to do. Right. Bitch, I'm a cow. I'm making moves. <laughs> <laughs> I have other things I need to do. I get so irritated when people are like, I went to Winco the other day. Oh, it's fucking that Winco. Mm-hmm. So that Winco the other day. And lady was like, oh, hello. How are you doing? You fine? Everything nice? Yeah, cool. Oh, that's your kid? I'm like, yeah, that's your only one? Yeah. Right. You don't want to have more? I said, did I come in this line for therapy? Right. <laughs> I mean, eventually, yeah, but not right yeah. now. Like, just because he's seven doesn't mean I want to jump in and have another kid. Let's say if I get, excuse me, get married tomorrow. A bitch won't be having another kid for at least two or three years. <laughs> because why? I want us to be a unit and be right. used to that. And then when he goes off with his dad in the summer, it'd be the two of us. Mm-hmm. I already lost the opportunity for it to be just the two of us already. Yeah. So the least I can do is let it be the two of us for Christmas and summertime. <laughs> right. Like, I want it to be as close to what I picture in my mind when I was 21 Right. than I do now to what I want now. It's so irritating. I guess I can kind of feel what Women go through when they reach a certain age, and people are like, You don't want kids? When you gonna have kids? Right. It's like, Nigga, do you see me with a nigga? Right. Like, no, you don't. Why are you asking me that? Right. But if I get knocked up and you don't know who that person is, you'll go behind my back talking shit. Mm hmm. So either you shut the fuck up or you <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, there's nothing else you can right. do. You're not controlling my womb. Mm hmm. Ain't nobody, baby, gonna go in there. Anyway. <laughs> 
I know for my rent. I don't know. This whole situation. But the, the Janelle and Kale situation, I'm still kind of... It's not as serious, Brianna. But um, they just been going back talking shit about each right. other. I mean, Janelle said something about, like, at least I'm married. And then it's like, no, girl, nobody can take that. But that should, we tell, all take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. That don't mean nothing. Yeah. A ring on your finger and a child that came from that is nothing to yeah. me <laughs> at yeah. all. I'm like, well, at least my record clean, bitch. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to, you know, have a hard time getting a job because they ain't right. running background checks on me that come back just all types of just craziness. Right. Every man she's been with, except for her current husband, she has been arrested with them in some kind of way. Kiefer, <laughs> Cortland, <laughs> her baby daddy, number one, yeah. Nathan. Damn. Well, she's right or die. She's gonna die. She's right. Gonna die. Literally, if you don't start asking questions before you get in the she's car. She's been riding for too damn long. Yeah. It's just been Lord crazy. Bless her. Bless her. <laughs> Wait, what's that from? Holly Hart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. It's, oh. She's. Uh, they... Moving on. We can talk. We don't have that much longer. So we have time for one more show that we can talk about. Okay. What would you rather choose between Jersey, Love and Hip Hop? Oh, I guess we can pick between those oh. two. <laughs> uh, I ran out of options. Yeah. Um. Or ninety day fiance. That would be too long. <laughs> That's a good thirty minute discussion in itself. Good old ninety day. Yeah. Um. guess we can do jersey since it's only one episode and then i guess love and hip-hop we can give them a nice segment next week only thing i gotta say about love and hip-hop i never thought that they would have somebody on their worst as james R. they do rock star oh yes is the worst yes no he he yeah he is and then i went and i googled his resume and he actually has worked with like some really big people and i'm like why are you on this show being such a well for one it's not even why are you on this show it's you have he's worked with rihanna j-lo chris brown and some other really big name people Mm -hmm. like a-listers and i'm like why are you so threatened by by a1 i don't know I wouldn't even think about that. I'm just talking about his over exaggeration of everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm James R. <laughs> what did the R stand for? I still want to know. Retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Right. Uh, no, I I didn't think it would be anybody worse than James R. And yeah, this, it, it, he's, he's just so extra. over it. For what? He been practicing. He been waiting. Yeah, for he been like, I've been waiting for my moment to have my love and hip hop interview. <laughs> And I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. He was lying to that bitch about talking about how she can sing. Right. Oh, you sound great. And he turns right. back to the blah, blah, blah. like Right. It's come so on, dude. Like nobody I think it's gonna make it worse. Yeah. I've like feel like people are not gonna take him seriously in his craft. No. Just by being so extra. Yeah. He can be on the show, but still do so what he gotta extra, do. Yeah. Cause London on the track is on um Black Ink Crew. Yeah. That's another show we forgot about. Yeah. God damn it. That one. Jersey Shore or Black and White? Okay. Let's go back to our list. Jersey, Basketball Wise, Black and Crew. Let, you know, let's talk about Basketball Wise. Okay. Good. I've only seen clips, but I... No, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty good just topic to yeah, discuss. Yeah, to close it off on. Um, I forget. See, this is... This, well, my phone dead, so we don't really have an outline like we usually have been in the past yeah. couple of weeks. Um, but I'm thoroughly annoyed with Cece. Mm-hmm. I feel like her bringing up the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Is pointless. Yeah. She should follow Malaysia's advice and stop bringing it up. Yeah. It was the whole thing about the happy endings. 
Yes, it can be kind of, it is kind of fucked up because it is somebody's legitimate business. Right. They already said, okay, cool. Well, this is what we heard. My bad. I didn't really mean to, yeah. you know, you know, try to downplay your business. But I mean, it was just kind of joke. Okay, cool. Why do you have to keep bringing it up? Yeah. Which is the point? Yeah. I I haven't seen, well, I guess that's how it keeps getting brought up. <laughs> um, but yeah, my, and like I said, I have not seen the show, but my ir- irritants, is that, <laughs> yeah, it's going to work for now. Irritants. My irritants, irritants <laughs> has really work. just been towards Evelyn because... I'm like, okay, when Tammy said what she said about you being, uh, you know, you Lying initiating, yes, your incident with Chad, it was like, how dare you say that? Mm-hmm. And then you turn around, probably in their whole filming world, probably not even two to three weeks later, and you say... I thought she said Ling Ling at first, but I guess it was Lee Lee. Which she I said guess Lee Lee, but I think she said it incorrectly. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh. And it was just like. Come on, girl. Yeah. And it was like, and that's why I guess she did issue an apology. But I was just like, but you were just up Tammy's ass not even two weeks ago about how dare she cross the line and say that to you. And then you turn around. And you cross the yeah, line. Yeah. And then it's like. People that have to insult people by going the race route, just really, I'm like. I mean, it's really only a look because technically you don't even really know what race she is. She yeah. can be all kind of shit. Right. Let's be real. Yeah. And it's like, if you want to insult her, I'm pretty sure there's 10 different names that you can call her that has nothing to do with her race. So True. it was like, why to even go there? I mean, you can always and, call somebody a bitch. Yeah. And it, uh, yeah. I'd rather but, you call her a, a gold digger or something. Right. Yeah. You get something you know. else, but you went directly to Lily. Right. And then Kristen, I just, oh God, I don't even want to talk about her. Oh, the, 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 the yeah. girl who's. The sister, no, daughter-in-law yeah. of Cece's boyfriend. Yeah. What about her? Well, she gets on my nerves, but go ahead. Yeah, and then I haven't really watched every single episode. So I'm just like, um, I haven't seen every single episode, but I'm just like every single clip or episode that I do see, it's you Running back to Evelyn and Jen about, well, Cece said something, Cece said this, or Cece said that. And I'm just like, is half of this drama being kept up because you are running back to them? And it just kind of seems like you so- It is. Yeah, it's so desperately that you either don't like Cece that much or you just really want to be Evelyn and Jen's friend. And it's just- I don't like yeah. how she tries to play the family card, but then the stuff that she does is things that you wouldn't do you towards wouldn't, family. No, not to no, especially not even to strangers. That's the same thing last season when um the other Kristen, her well, sister tried Malaysia to do. tapped out. She said, "I'm, de- I'm done with de- live with this bullshit." Yeah, <laughs> it's like she's like, "I'm already a part of the family, so by I blood, need so I don't really need any of this deal with this, with this wives and girlfriend drama." <laughs> No wags over here, yeah. right? I ain't dealing with it. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Kristen. I, I'm this first time I really knew where her name was. Mm-hmm. Um, she gets on my nerves. Mm-hmm. I feel like she tries to, yeah, like pretty much befriend. She doesn't really have her own peace of mind. I think I've gotten one scene of her giving her peace of mind when she was outside with Cece talking about the whole situation. Yeah. And she was trying to tell Cece, well, like, stand up for yourself. I think it's the only time she really had her own place. Everything else has been to appease yeah. everyone else or have some type of, oh, well, I want you to like me yeah, type of thing. Right. And you need to be able to stand on your own. And if Evelyn and Jennifer don't like you, that means you actually stood your ground. That really is it. 
like if you stand your ground they'll be like well I don't really like her kind of like Cece yeah then that means she did, wasn't really trying to kiss their ass yeah so the fact that you had a private conversation with Cece outside and that Evelyn wind up hearing about the whole well let's go to their job and see what they do yeah like three episodes later it's like you were kind of like thinking about the conversation like you know what? I should tell them bitches. <laughs> Guess what else she said? She was like, well, I said I was going to stay out of it. But but you didn't but stay you out didn't. of it because you told them what CC said. At the end of the day, she is the closest thing to family than any of those bitches there besides Malaysia. Right. If you ain't going to do it to Malaysia, then you shouldn't be doing it to CC. Yeah. Now, the part that I think CC is fucking up is now he, she's getting her husband involved. Well, her boyfriend involved. Yeah. Which is... Kristen's dad, uh, father-in-law. Yeah. And saying, well, I don't want to spend Christmas and Father's Day. Now, like, you're just really fucking up the rotation with yeah. our family. And then I guess the next, the scene for the next episode, she's, like, yelling at Cece, like, y'all need to come see my kid and blah, 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 blah. And, like, now Cece is fucking up because now I guess she's telling so much. Yeah. And, and putting stuff in her boyfriend's ear about what's going on with Kristen or whatever. Yeah. And like, oh, well, they don't even pay for anything. It's like, mm, that's still your, your, that's still your son. Right. Like, you know, like what, what does paying for anything have to do with anything? Yeah. If that's your child and your step and your daughter-in-law and yeah. your grandchild. So what does it matter? Yeah. Let's say that was true. And you, you know, pay for everything and blah, 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 blah. That's your child. You shouldn't right. be saying, passing a message through your girlfriend to your daughter-in-law. Right. Talking you should about, be I'm telling not him spend. directly. Like, I'm cutting you off. If, the, if that <laughs> is the case, like, that shouldn't be a... And that's how, he that's said, why I feel like Cece is a part of that yeah. or influencing that because in real circumstances, ain't no grown ass man not going to be able to talk to his grown ass son yeah. about him paying for everything when he didn't raise him. Very Come true. on now. That's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But it just don't make no kind of sense. I think it's very funny that Shawnee wants to get in the weed business. Yeah. I think it's nice to see. I always think it's really nice to see these people have at least some type of good relationship with their kids. Yeah. And with Shawnee dealing with her two sons that have been appearing the most on the se- this season. Yeah. I'm like, it's a nice different thing about, instead of being around catty bitches all the time. Mm-hmm. Deal with people that matter like your children. Right. Very, very true. What do you think about the Tammy and Reggie situation? Oh, Tammy is gonna... I don't... I mean, I understand her being scared. Right. But you can only... You can't let what Kenny Anderson did to you mess up your whole life and everything you've got going on. Like, it would be one thing if you can say, you know what, there are certain characteristics in Reggie that remind me of my ex. And that's a whole nother story. But if you, you said it yourself, you're very happy, you like your relationship, and you're just that scared that once you get married that he's going to do you like your ex-husband or just walk out on you because, you know, the whole child thing. And I think all of that is a cover-up. Yeah. I think she's used to dumbass niggas. Mm. Thug Probably niggas. thought Reggie was one. No, I don't even think she thought he was one. I feel like she's so used to horrible men. Yeah. You know, okay, for example, you know how you've been dealing with shitty niggas for so long, and then when you finally get a good one, you're like, this has to be fake. Yeah. I feel like she... She, that's kind of what her mindset is. Yeah. Like, this can't be real. You must be some type of fuck boy. Yeah. But she's using the excuse of the fuck boy in her past. Yeah. As a means to stall something from a good man and also using the whole baby situation. Look, he knew what it was. Right. He knew when he, he from day 
fucking one that he knew your age. He knew good and damn well you had some grown ass kids. He knew good and damn well that he probably wasn't going to be able to have no kids with you. Mm -hmm. At least biologically. I feel like he fucking knew that. Right. She's being paranoid all because she he she actually does have a good band and she's afraid that when she does get married, he turns into a fuck boy. That's the yeah. that's what I think. I don't even think it's like, oh, I just don't want it to I mean, we're good right now, blah, 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 blah. Like, no. I mean, if you're good now, you're gonna be good afterwards. You're just yeah. afraid that he's gonna be a fuck boy. Mm-hmm. What I say, girl, you better go get your man. Right. <laughs> get your man. Before he go and get somebody else. He say, oh, it's going to be okay. But I agree with her daughter. It's like, you got to give him something. Like, yeah. he's been giving you everything. Mm-hmm. You already told the man that you, you. I mean, she did try to have kids. Yeah. She had multiple miscarriages, unfortunately. So, I mean, it's not like she did do anything. Right. But if he's going to be deprived of something that he wants, which is children. The least you can do is let him be a husband. Right. That's the same as uh, Nikki and John Cena. Like, wait. Mm. So you expect her to stay, even though he was kind of like, look, if you want to go, you can go. That was really kind of the fucked up part. Wine. But <laughs> he was like, uh, yeah, I don't want to get married and I don't want kids. Like, all right. So this is what we're doing. But then she leaves. Oh, Nikki, I want you back. Which I'm like, okay. But, yeah, Tammy needs to... Get your man, girl. Yeah, stop playing. He got a brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you see. He got a brother. I don't know. He's just... The way he talks is just so calm and, like... I'll probably... We'll probably have a conversation and be like, I hate that you're so logical right now. Right. It Very pisses chill. me off. But your voice is so smoothing and soothing. <laughs> right. That makes me want to be have better right. choices. And... What I always love about a man mm-hmm. is them not trying to change you and then love you for who you are. He know, he know Tammy crazy. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> he does. <laughs> but he's not the same as in for and Nikki. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Tammy's not beating his ass. No, no. Or I throwing don't think she cereal. Would, I don't, or I yeah, don't think she would ever she, do that. She lets him be a man at the same time. Yeah. Regardless of how old or young he Very is, true. I think that's a huge difference between Nikki and Four and Tammy and Reggie. Yeah, like she lets him be a man because she wants him to be a man. Yeah, and that's kind of what I, I need a man to be a man. Yeah. I want to be able to let things go because mm-hmm. I'm always queen independent. Blah blah blah. I want to be able to let things go. Right. I want to. I want to not have to worry about which bill I got to pay this week because <laughs> you got it. Right. I want to be able to not have to take trash out because you got it. The simple stuff. The simple stuff. I want to be able to, you know, not worry about maybe I want a bath and you know I want it and I come home and the bath is run. That would be oh, nice. Wouldn't that be nice? You know you like baths. Mm-hmm. So just things. some nice candles, <laughs> a nice little bath bomb maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, some nice little music. I don't know what your feel is. <laughs> But, you know, just somebody that can really think about you. It would be nice. Have your brain so slow down just a little bit. Just a tad. Mm-hmm. That sounds amazeball. And she has it. And it's like, I don't, I don't I know. I don't want her to lose it. Yeah. And I really hate that people really calling her like a crackhead. Right. It's because like, if you really think about it, uh, Tammy from Real World Days, she kind of looks same yeah i feel like since we're so used to how she was in season one up until last season she yeah. kind of looked the same and now when she's actually at a healthy weight it looks like oh well, you do look like a crackhead candle six it's like she looks fine like right. if she just looks smaller in the neck area her neck yeah. looks elongated but the rest of her body like she, her face and stuff i'm like still yeah, no, you just see more of her structure, but I feel like overall, if you look at her, she doesn't look anorexic no. or small or anything like that. I just kind of think it's kind of crazy for people to assume that. Yeah. And I think I need Jen to go back over there. Now she's going to Amsterdam just to have be. a conversation with Shawnee. 
One thing about Shawnee, she said, when she done, she done. She yeah. ain't got no time to be dealing with you. She got a show to executive produce. She got that show. She got her home something, home court with Shawnee or something yeah. like that. Her, her own, own show. damn show. She had another show with the football players. Mm-hmm. It never came back on for a second season. Oh, so yeah. I guess I didn't like that. the I like Football Wives. And was it called Football Wives? Mm-hmm. With Pilar Sanders. And all the women didn't like her. That's when she was still married to Dion. They got divorced. Shortly. No, there was one more recent. Oh, wait, not Wags. In, uh, no, in Miami. Sanders wasn't on there. No, yeah, because football wise was years ago. So oh, no. Recent. Uh, it was like when the last, because you know, there was space between last season, basketball wise, and yeah. this season. When that was ending, another show had started in Miami with football players. Oh, foot! It was. Ba- I know what you, I know what you're talking about because it was Michael Vick's wife. Yes, and it was. Yes, I, I know. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh wait, wasn't that also bass? No, it Mm-mm. was. It baller wise. Wow, yes, there yes. we go. <laughs> okay, but it was pretty much football players. Um, she did that EP on that show. Mm-hmm. So she's taking all the coins. Yeah, Shaq who. Right. I mean, that alimony still coming Shaku. in, but well, still Shaquille O'Neal. Hey, right. <laughs> After a while, it's uh, gonna be. That's, she ain't ever gonna get married. No. Who Hell wants no. that alimony? She's not, getting, ma- she's not getting divorced until that alimony check runs out. <laughs> like, yeah. Does it run out? It's like five. It was like fifty. It was a large amount, but it's like five million a year for like 10, 15 years. The way it's divided. And then on top of that, I think it was an additional like 40000 for child support. Obviously, that's lower now because some of them are over 18, but $5 million. Was The one going to college, I think, is the oldest. Yeah. And I, I think one's about to leave high school, yeah. and then there's three left. Oh, I think the youngest is like 13 yeah. or 12 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, and they just got divorced and went 08, 09. I mean, only, but that's 10 yeah, years ago. it's like, yeah. So it's like, she still got about at least a good five to seven years of collecting her five million a year. I feel like all the money was until you get married again. No, it was. It was oh. like, she gets it mm-hmm. until that, either that amount runs out oh, or, because it, it's a it. big lump So there's still, a, there's still an expiration. Or day. she gets married. Yeah. Yeah. She said, I ain't get married. Anytime. Not at least, Yeah. She can be in a serious relationship. She was like, I'm I mean, Shaq be- didn't get married either. Hell no. So, he said, this ain't happening again. Right? He was about to marry Hoops, and he thought, like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. He's That man's worth a lot of money. Yeah. Before divorce, after, after divorce. Yeah, because he was probably like, okay, after Shawnee, I was able to recuperate. I yeah. got these, you know, sponsorship deals with the general. And the he got he too like, many gold bond and, like, right. Mercury Insurance gold bond. And then he's doing like sports. Yeah, he stuff. was like, "Wait, another divorce? If that person has kid, no, not doing it." I don't even think he wants to pay the lawyers. Yeah, to do a, a prenup. I'm not Kelsey Grammer. You, <laughs> Kelsey Grammer is a thug because he don't hear just marrying bitches without. No- you get a divorce and a check. You get a divorce. That's why Camille, after like once, I think after like a year, it was like, "Wait, he re-left me for somebody else." The checks have cleared. <laughs> Move it! <laughs> what are a younger man like? All right. That bitch got what? 50 million. 50 million? Fuck! <laughs> and that's his second wife. Right. The first one got a big check too. <laughs> he was like, you don't do prenups. No, he does. he refuses. He feels like if he's getting married, he's I'm getting married the wrong for real. type of men. Well, you get an old, old old white man. Jersey, somebody who thinks, yeah, thinks like that. Get with you some a, money. get you a Muhammad, mm. but no, Muhammad don't marry. No, he ain't married Sheba this whole time. Right. Who else could you really count on? Mm. David, David Foster. He on his fifth wife. Yeah, Yolanda wasn't she like three or four? Yeah. Don't make no damn sense. Right. Just, okay. Um. Yeah. yeah that. I need you to go away. Go away. Yeah, just go away. <laughs> and bonk, bonk, remember bitch. that bo- that remember that book about the mosquito that never goes away. Yeah, that's got that's she the mosquito. Right. 
classic book right there. <laughs> that rainbow fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, CC meh. Kristen, hell no. How do you feel about OG? She she gives me vibes. Um, I will say I I just because I I'll admit it again I have not been watching every episode. I just. What I do like about her is the fact that she does not let anybody just talk to her any type of way. Mm. I will say for that, I do like her. I have not watched enough to really have a full opinion on her, but... Well, this last episode, um, Malaysia had an event for, like, women in shelters and pretty much say, bring whatever you have in your closet Oh, OG yes. didn't bring her. She said she left it or whatever, yeah. but she still wanted to come anyway. Yeah. And Zell was given. First of all, Zell, what the fuck are you mm, popping right, up? Why are in? you there? Yeah. Bathroom wise is messy, but it's nowhere near loving hip hop. Yeah. We don't. The whole messiness, talking about people breath and like, it's funny, you know, but it's not. That's yeah. not the the mood of basketball wise. Right. It's strictly drama amongst women and that's really pretty much it you're not one of the women whether you're a friend with many or not on the show it's, it's yeah. weird so yeah he was just like oh um her him and tammy was like well, why don't you bring anything she was like well i had the flat tire i had this horrible day but i wanted to come anyway yeah honestly it's like why y'all worry about what the fuck she bringing or not anyway yeah yeah just Petty. I had saw that clip online, but I didn't see the full thing. But it was kind of just like, wait, why, why? are y'all so pressed about it? Yeah, what the fuck? Malaysia was like, yeah, Zell gave her a hard time, but she came anyway, and I appreciate it. So cool. Yeah, like I guess that's my thing too. Was like, I mean, if we're cool and I don't really have a that much of a problem with you, I'm still gonna make it. You know, yeah. try to make it to your event because you invited me, right? And you know, whatever. And she came there and. It was cool. And then Zell's still trying to be messy. Oh, can you take... Oh, can we get all the people that donated? Let's take a yeah. picture together. It's like... If you don't go somewhere, <sighs> just trying to get you a little check. Ridiculous. Do he get checks? Just because they put his name on a little banner? Probably not. He's not even a friend of Cass. He's yeah. just a person. Right. Probably just did it for... Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who watch Basketball Wives, but that don't watch Love and Hip Hop and don't know who oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. At all. Yeah, not everybody gets a check for a cameo. So, he probably, yeah. Ridiculous. But, um, yeah, that's all I can really think of is from that show. Yeah. Not that much going on. I mean, we'll see what happens when Jane gets to Amsterdam, which I feel like is completely ridiculous. Yeah. I still feel like Shawnee needs to be mad at, at, at Tammy, though. Yeah. I really do, because Tammy, yes, Jen spread created the rumor <laughs> and created the rumor over a year ago, but Tammy is the one who got FOMO and got mad at the fact that Jen and, and Evelyn are back friends mm-hmm. and she wanted to bring it, re-bring it up. Yeah. She re-brought it up. Yeah. If she would have never said anything, no one would have ever known that Jim was trying to be all nasty and evil about a year ago when she wasn't fucking with Evelyn. Yeah. Like, you need to still hold her accountable. Yeah. For even bringing it up. Why are you bringing it up? You're mad about something. Mm-hmm. So now, yeah, she's put my family dynamic on the line by bringing up this rumor, but you're also threatening it because you're bringing it back up. Yeah. Now you're bringing it to my attention now which is a year later yeah so if it were me i'd be mad at both of them equally honestly yeah. because it's like why the fuck were you even bringing that up in the first place mm-hmm. you mad because they friends why are you even worried about what the fuck they doing anyway yeah what point is it what, what... yeah anywho they're both I don't... tammy and evelyn they're funny because it's like even because yeah apparently tammy walked away from the reunion uh-huh and, and I, then I've noticed, like, Tammy, I guess, hasn't, apparently, hasn't filmed with them in, like, the last few episodes, I guess, since the whole blow up with her and Evelyn. And I guess people have been saying, like, all Evelyn still does is talk about Tammy the past few episodes, and Tammy isn't even around. I'm like, well, that, that's them. Like, 
They've been like that since Miami, since yeah. Tammy's very first season. Yeah. I mean, the d- dynamic between Evelyn and Tammy is not something new. It's no. been like that this whole entire time. Yeah. I feel like this has just been the worst part of it. Yeah. Um, Between Tammy saying Evelyn lying about the whole domestic violence thing. Mm-hmm. And then Evelyn calling her a crackhead and bringing up this whole rumor about... Evelyn sleeping with Shawnee's ex, a.k.a. Shaq. Right. Of course, they had to bleep it out on the show for legal purposes. But mm-hmm. other than that, I'm like, it's just... Yeah. I feel like Basketball Wives needs to finally come to an end. Yeah. I think it needs to come to an end. Yeah. They're not really bringing anybody of any substance. I feel like the last person who was really like, ooh, I'm so happy they're back again, was really Drea for me. Yeah. After and that, it was gone. just like, mm. and she said, no amount of money would ever get her back. Which and I she believe. was dead ass serious about that. I I really believe it. She yeah. took her mint swim and all that, and just said, "Fuck this! I got a nice little NFL boyfriend. We got kids together. I don't need you and your loving hip hop checks." Yeah, I don't need you. <laughs> she hasn't been on any reality Mm-mm. TV show since then, right? Because it's like you know what they're gonna bring you back as. They're gonna bring you back. And it's just going to be attack Drea all over again. And it's like, why? Why go through that? Especially when you don't need the money. It's like, no. So I'm hoping maybe Tammy follows suit. Like, some of this stuff Tammy definitely did bring on her own. Mm -hmm. But I think she got to a point where, honestly, she let her dislike for Evelyn, like... Take over. Yeah. And I think... Maybe she might have realized, like, you know what? I let my dislike for this person really take me to a place. And I think she might even be seeing, like, Tammy might be my friend, but at the end of the day, I mean, not Tammy. Shawnee might be my friend, but at the end of the day, she's always going to choose Evelyn over me. Which I mean, Evelyn and Shawnee been friends since before Tammy yeah, came on the show. So it's like, you know, like, I just think I, I think it's time for her to go ahead and walk away. Unless Tammy was at the very, 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 very beginning, like Evelyn was, that means they would have been have been deep, deeper friends, like yeah. an actual friend bond. Yeah, it's different when you're just brought on the show because we know of you, and I know of you as a basketball wife or a basketball ex wife. Yeah, there's a huge difference. Yeah. Shawnee and Evelyn are actually friends. Yeah. So I, I guess she just wants Shawnee to be mad at Evelyn, and yeah, it's not happening, right? Because I'm like, but even like other stuff, like uh, like even how Tammy did, and she was like, I had a comedy show, I made a joke about Evelyn, you didn't laugh, which she was like, oh, okay, you know, that's your friend, mm-hmm. but yet I find out that Evelyn's over here cracking jokes, and y'all are just laughing it up. I'm like, okay, I can understand how you'd feel some type of way, but I think you just. This kind of, hopefully, I hope it shows you that, like, y'all might be cool, but you it's just time for you to do a Drea and be like, it's time for me to walk away. You I got to I, get this spinoff. Go. I love Bonnet Chronicles. And... I think I mentioned this before. I feel like she's just kind of focusing on trying to be friends with people who don't want to be friends with her. Yeah. And then when she get, they didn't, that didn't, where friendship didn't work out, she got mad and wanted to retaliate. At some point, it's like, you have to understand what kind of woman you are and your self-worth and see if you even feel like dealing with the situation and with people that you feel like maybe are beneath you. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have friendships with everybody. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary. Yep. So, if you feel like you couldn't get along with those bitches, they never got along with you, you go over here crying to Jackie, oh, I've been trying and trying. Why did you try so long in the first fucking place? You got your man, you got mm-hmm. your kids, your health is on a better path. You know, you lost your mom. Like, you just kind of just deal with the path that's easier for you. You ain't yeah. gonna be friends with them. The fuck. Then mm-hmm. you wouldn't be dealing with that shit right now. Right. She got all in the business with Jackie versus Evelyn type of thing. Because mm-hmm. she was really igniting that last season. Yeah. So it was just like, just, just, just yeah, just stay with Bonnie Chronicles. Get your man, marry your man before he marries somebody else. Have your kids. You know, just do 
all that. She got the title, Bonnet Chronicle show. Like, yeah, just kind of let it just let it be. You you winning right now. Yeah. That's what I Ain't nothing wrong with that. At all. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's it for our week back. Yes, yes. Do you have any news? I don't have any news. Uh ooh. My book, Crazy Rich Asians, finally came. So I'm going to try to start reading that next week. You do the book before. I, mean, I didn't know it was movie. a book. I didn't know it was a book. Oh. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. You don't really, you always really, you don't really realize how many movies are based off books. Yeah. So I was like, well, I will definitely read it before the sequel comes out. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably try to read it before I go see it for a third time. Yeah. I got Inception, but I was. I never really got to finish reading. Yeah, it. I need more time to read. Yeah, I used, I used to read a lot, a lot more when I was like, even when Malachi was younger, I used to read a lot more. Because mm-hmm. um, I remember I read all three of those uh, Christian Grey books. Ah, hard the regular cover, not no <laughs> electric shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I need to do that. But yeah, it's, it's hard to kind of figure out what movies are based on. Yeah, books. it's like based off the book. I said, what? Amazon. I felt so like, ooh, instant. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and- I heard it was really good. I mean, I kind of want to support it because it's like the first all Asian cast in like 25 years. Yeah. Which is really sad. I'm so tired of hearing about, oh, this is the first something, something, something. Yeah. And then white people get all upset. Why mm-hmm. you got to be so divisive? Right. Why does it have to be about race? Well, if it wasn't a first, then why in the first fucking first? place, yeah, then it wouldn't be such an issue. Let us have our moment. Yeah, it was. Let black very, people shine. Yeah. You only hear about black people when we get shot or you know <laughs> or get arrested. Right. It kind of made me realize watching the movie like white people just been evil to everybody <laughs> like. I don't think no minority group should no. be beefing with each other because we all have a common, I hate to say it, a common enemy. <laughs> the white man. But no, it was, yeah. Beautiful movie. Um, I encourage anyone who thinks that they want to recreate that wedding scene, if you do not have a budget of at least a million dollars, don't even try. At least I, the most like beautiful like wedding that I have ever seen on TV. Well, a movie. Mm-hmm. Just I was in there. Yeah, I was actually crying the first time I saw it. Like, I'm not sure. It's so beautiful. That's right. It might it might replace the Notebook as favorite what? romance movie. Are you yeah, serious? Because it, it was cute and it was like oh. Yeah, that wedding. Apparently, there was some controversy because they felt like one of the Asian girls was trying to act black. Oh, Aquafina. <laughs> Aquafina. Oh, yeah. Yes. Aquafina. <laughs> yeah. That's her real name. Yeah. That's her real name? Mm-hmm. She was in a Ocean's 8. Oh. But yeah, she's a. I. I got where they were trying to say, but I, I didn't feel no time. But you away. know how I've. I, you know, I. I always feel a certain type of way about stuff like that because it's like, okay, you're saying that she's acting black, but what is acting black though? That is a very big question. Yeah. That is my issue. It's like, why are you like, oh, well, she's acting black. I'm like, so what is acting black? Well, she's yeah. trying to talk like us. And like, so you're saying all black people talk a certain type of yeah. way? Yeah. I- because I know when I talk to people, they want to tell me I sound like a white girl. Right. <laughs> so so what, <laughs> what that's that's always my hang up when people right. say stuff like that. I'll be like, oh, well, yeah. it's ghetto. Ghetto to me. Yeah. Does not is not only defined for people who are black. Yeah. What is the origin of the word ghetto from in the first place? Very so true. I don't I don't really go off of that. I'm like, cause there's no one way, particular way a black person yeah. speaks or acts. Mm-hmm. We're very different. We come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um uh, I read somewhere and I pretty much kind of self affirmed that we're like the only race that comes in so many different colors mm-hmm. to the the lightest of light to the darkest of darks. Mm-hmm. Is there any other race that really comes like in that much of variety? No. 
No, it's really just like mainly one shade. Yeah. Or a very small differentiation within yeah. one shade. Like, as black people, we just be like, uh, come in all different shapes and sizes and colors mm-hmm. and, and things of that nature. So I don't really, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to put that label on myself like, oh, she's acting black. No. What is acting black? Yeah, I wasn't. Offended. Black is, yeah, yeah, you're like a lot like me in a yeah. lot of aspects. It's like, I don't really take things too seriously about yeah. certain things. Like, I definitely do agree with a lot of culture appropriation yeah but not but all of it not yeah. all of it because i feel like sometimes it's just like well there's a certain definition of culture appropriation and things of that nature i think people right. just try to throw it out there hoping that it will stick and it's not like that's not what you use that for right you know it's one thing for somebody else to do it i think a, a sports announcer had braids on the other yeah. day and she looked absolutely ridiculous. It looked really bad on her. Like just from <laughs> like you just from a that. connoisseur of like getting your hair yeah. together, it looked absolutely terrible. But my problem is when little black girls wear the same kind of hair and they can't go to school. Like that's where my problem comes in. Right. It's not that necessarily that she's wearing it, but when this little black girl's wearing it. It's a problem. Right. And she can't do something as simple as Very going to school. True. That's when I have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Or a little black boy has dreads and he can't go to a school that he got free scholarship for. Mm-hmm. That's when I start having a problem with it. So, I don't know. This ain't no damn political or whatever podcast, but it comes up every mm-hmm. now and then because we got to check y'all people sometimes. <laughs> I know not all of our listeners are black. <laughs> we like diversity ears. It's right. fine. But we just got to let y'all know our perspective on some things. And mm-hmm. that's just kind of how it is. Like you see a black person work, walking down the street. If you think uh, automatically going to talk, speak, quote unquote, Ebonics. Right. Then you're the problem. You're part of the problem. Right. Because... First of all, a lot of black people don't even know what ebonics mean. That's really an old school <laughs> '80s term. Like, not right. everybody's gonna know what that means. People are not gonna understand what a lot, especially these younger ones. Oh yeah, I get. I feel like I'm old. I be like, who are these people that they be talking about? The rapper, the six nine. What is what is, what is yeah. this? <laughs> I mean, the boat. Like, yeah. what? Is, I just, I just get so confused. <laughs> We over here talking about Evanescence and right. Franz Ferdinand and 303. Like, come on now. Not all black people is going to fit the, this description that the media Very wants to portray. True. Not one fucking bit. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to fear that when my child gets older. Mm-hmm. He's seven. Ain't nobody, nobody going to be scared of him. But once he gets 10 and he start getting that little bass in his voice. Then yeah. I got to start talking to him like Malaysia talked to her son. Let me tell you how to deal with when you come in contact with police. Yeah. It's, it's just, I'm just, guys, it's just true information. But anyway, mm-hmm. I'm going to stop ranting. I'm a little tipsy. <laughs> and I don't really have any news. You can still follow me on my fat journey. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so horrible. But yes. I'm in a journey of losing fat. And my Instagram is Fumi Loses Fat. Fumi is spelled F U N as in Nancy M I. And you can also follow me personally on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Fumi Adagun. Adagun is spelled A D A G U N as in Nancy. And then you can also follow me on Snapchat, Ebony A88. Ma'am. Uh, yes. Facebook, Roberta Smith. That's my name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> and Instagram, leave it to be with the two. And the number two. Mm-hmm. Not the word two. And yeah, anyway, I was about to bring up some, uh, what is it called? Grammar. Oh. <laughs> two, two, and two. Six? Not math. Oh. <laughs> Two T O two T O O two the yes. number two. <laughs> yes. <I was> like, <laughs> six. yes, math queen. Right. <laughs> six. 
Um, yeah, so we've done really great. We have over 500 followers on Instagram. That's they all like great. Us. The hood loves us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. <laughs> I know she's been saying that for a while. <laughs> um, we've been really, really, really overdue with our giveaway. Like, oh, yeah, severely. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, I gotta find the damn thing. All right. I just been in the closet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on out the closet, and I guess we'll make that announcement when you find it. When it gets out the closet, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yeah, we'll just figure out what exactly we want to do, how we want to do the giveaway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once we figure that out, we'll announce it on uh, here and on our social media. Um, don't yep. forget us to add all the platforms. Because sometimes there's stuff I can add on Facebook that I can <laughs> add on Twitter, you know, right. or Instagram, whatever. So um, it's just be- best to add all of the platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we will see y'all next week. Or, Bye. Or talk to y'all next week. No. <laughs> Don't forget, bitch, I'm a cow. <laughs> Bye.